someone trying to break in. Someone's in your house. <laughs> I hated that part <laughs> on the <that> CD. <laughs> I fell asleep. Walter. I fell asleep and woke up to that. I was gonna say, if you forget about that part, me and some friends of mine were all just hanging out downstairs, had that album playing. We forgot the music just stopped. Yeah, that's man. how they get you. All of a sudden, it was like what, fifteen minutes after the fact, and it just starts yelling. All of us jumped, scared the crap out of us. <laughs> well, all. that's because that no, it starts. It's, it's on, on uh, Sticks and Stones. Yeah. Sticks and Stones, New yeah. Glory. So oh. I was cleaning my room when it happened, and it starts out like, yeah. <laughs> and so I like put my ear up to the freaking speakers, like, what is this? Someone's in your house. Well, I was mowing my lawn, my parents' lawn at the time, and, that's and how all of a sudden it starts going. Toe. I'm like, what the? What's going on? <laughs> Where am I? I'm not even in the house. <laughs> God? Hello. Someone's in the house. You're yelling from the backyard, who's in my house? <laughs> <laughs> Someone's in your house. All right. Well, this is perfect. Um, welcome to Fives a Crowd. We missed you guys. It's been a whole seven days. Um, for but them. Uh, <laughs> for them, <laughs> it's been right. two weeks for us. I'm sad. I missed you guys. I know. I know. It has been a minute. It's good to be back. Long two weeks. Um, so from a couple episodes ago, or depending on when it comes out, we had mentioned that we're going to start going around and we get to each pick our topic of choice and it cannot be vetoed by the other four. And I'm the lucky one that got to pick the topic this week. And I wanted to talk about music. Music. The hills are alive <laughs> with the sound <laughs> of music. Ah. Great movie, by the way. I never mean, saw it. I haven't seen never it. seen it. And I don't want to. See it. You no. should. You should. I'm good. It looks like four hours of torture. It exactly. is. One. It's the lady from Mary Poppins, and she's nice. Two <laughs> takes place in uh, in uh, Austria during okay. uh, the World War Two, uh, right? Yep, World, World War Two. And not to give any spoilers, but the uh, oldest daughter's boyfriend's a dick. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that the one where that song, all of my favorite things? These are a few mm-hmm, of mm-hmm, my favorite. Mm-hmm. Isn't why Doe on Hadir earth on is that, that a Christmas song? Like it always plays you're around Christmas. You're Christmas. Grateful for things. Thankful and grateful in Christmas. It's more of a Thanksgiving thing yeah. than my favorite one is <laughs> Edelweiss. That area. Mm. Edelweiss. Edelweiss. What does that mean? Isn't that German? It sounds it's, like a yeah. horrible. It's a movie. flower. It's a flower. Interesting. A white flower. It's I'll, actually real good. I'll tell you what. I will Classic reserve film. my judgments and not watch the movie and still not say anything. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> you like Tim Burton, so I know where you're. Uh, you're <laughs> well, I'm like getting to question everyone's <laughs> <laughs> more, more video compass here. Like, well, I don't know what's going on. We all got pros and cons. Tim Burton has made his share of musicals, and they're excellent. Let's not go down this road. road. Okay, <laughs> this is going to be a battle royale. <laughs> We're going to end this bloody. Carry on. <laughs> Chair shots and everything. Carry on. No, I, I had the idea of doing music. Well, I've, I've been wanting to do music for a while, but I feel like in my life lately, music has been very, very healing, I guess would be the word, on all platforms of genres. And so, yeah, I'm Therapeutic. I'm loving it. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. I believe music has yeah. power. Oh, yeah. For sure. Yeah. So, Especially uh, angsty teenagers. <laughs> we'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> we had plenty yeah. of it. Yeah. So yeah. so to start this out, um, I wanted to reach back to our childhood and talk about what we listened to as kids, what got us pumped, maybe what your first cassette was, if you had a cassette. <laughs> I did not have a cassette. No? I had a couple. No. I had a, couple. I had a so half I, bunch. I did not get... This might be weird for... I might not be able to get into my childhood because I didn't start listening to music really well until like ninth grade. Oh, no, when see, you can I, form I, sentences. So. Yeah. My laughs were in sync there. That was, that was harmonic. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no. <laughs> Bro, I had a Walkman. I see, I, I see, and I didn't have a Walkman. I had a Discman. I had a but Discman. I didn't have a Walkman. But I straight, up, I straight up had a Walkman with like the. 
the like wire headphones. Remember that it was like oh, a yeah, thin yeah. metal cable yeah. and the little puffs. Mm-hmm. See, I had the wire headphones, but I had that. Do you remember the tape player that was like a big rectangle and it was brown? And the speaker was like half of it, and then yes. the other side was the tape part that popped up, yes, and then the we buttons were at the end. Too. Yeah. yeah, that's what I had. And I had, oh, what was the? I, th- I want to say I had the cassette of the Lion King. Nice. I okay. think I did too. Hi. No, we had the CD. Oh, it, maybe I had the C- what cassette did I listen to? I had Mortal Kombat. <laughs> 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 yeah, a lot of a lot of soundtracks then. Um, so let me throw this at you guys. If you remember this, I do remember one specific thing about my childhood when it came to music. I remember calling a radio station saying, I want to listen or hear this song sitting by the radio waiting to hit record on the tape recorder. Yes. And then when your song came on, you'd hit record it. Oh, and yeah. it always made you so mad when the DJ would overlap either the start or the end yes. of the song. Yes. Like, yes. Give me the stinking song with no interruptions. You know yes. I found out way later in life, like probably a, few, a couple years ago, radio stations speed up the songs. Really? Yes. See, I've what? heard them. Have I've... you ever noticed you're singing a song and you're like, if I feel... It feels different. Like it feels off. Hmm. They speed it up. Hmm. So it goes faster. So they have more time for advertisements. See, I'd never heard. I've heard them cut songs short, especially. So growing up, one of my big go to bands was Metallica. Mm -hmm. And if you listen to Metallica or know them at all, you know that their short songs are six minutes. And playing them on the radio, man, they'll cut out guitar solos and all kinds of stuff. Oh, yeah. That, yeah, there used to be the radio edits. I don't know if they still do that. They probably I, do. I called them the radio. When would when did that uh, Wonderwall come out by Oasis? Oh, that had to be like... That had to have been early, early 90s. Like high school. Uh, 90s. Yeah. Or no, I, I, so that was 90s. I remember it being big in high school still. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. But yeah, that was probably early It was 90s. like junior high, right? So I remember mm-hmm. calling in. I was like, hey, I called in one of our radio stations that starts with an X. Excellent. And, 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 <laughs> and uh used to be good. I was like, hey, can you Try guys to... play Oasis Wonderwall? And he's like, kid, there's no way in hell I'm playing that. Really? <laughs> oh, was it Todd Newcomb? It wasn't. What? I know him. I actually knew him all growing up. Well, yeah, he was your friend's brother. Yeah. That so, surprises me with that radio station because now it's like pff, the music they play on there is total crap. garbage. Mm. They suck. Yes. They used to be came great. out in 95 as a heads up. There you go. So, okay, on the radio thing, what was your go-to radio station? Did you have one? One S- Star 102.7. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the oldies? <laughs> no, station? That's no. oldies 94.1. Oh. <laughs> yes. It was either Star 102.7, B98.7, or X ninety six. I always liked. Wasn't it ninety four nine ZHT? That was, that that. was me too. That was yeah. me. I was all about yeah. ninety four nine. And then it's funny because my dad was all about one hundred three point five. The Arrow. Yeah. Oh, my yeah. mom was all about one hundred. One hundred point three. One hundred point three. FM one hundred. Uh-huh. FM one hundred. Christmas music in July. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Olivia Newton John blaring all the time. I'm like. Ugh. Yeah. And then uh, and then I would listen to that. But then when I got older, it was X ninety six most of the time. See, I couldn't handle X ninety six. I couldn't handle the the hosts, the radio hosts. They drove me insane. Oh, mm. the radio hosts and commercials on every radio station bugged me. See, I, I was trying to get to K-Bear the K Bear one hundred one. That's when the mute the, button was. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, K Bear One Hundred One. They were the rock station at the time. They were good. Well, here, so I, so here's what I didn't understand about CDs because when you had a Walkman, a tape walk, Walkman, you didn't have to well, worry Walkman, about it skipping. Yeah, the, yeah, exactly. And so, like CDs came out, and all of a sudden you're supposed New to get technology. this CD. What, you know what are they called discman discman mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and all of a sudden you like you could carry it but like very gently yeah because they, they didn't have that with buffer the, well, and they, they came were out bigger the, the anti-skip feature yeah and i remember there was one i bought that didn't have that and i was like what the That's crap what was saying. going on you couldn't you, you yeah. couldn't move it no you couldn't touch it <laughs> yeah it had to sit mm-hmm. and so you're like what's the point of this 
I had to spend an extra 50 ever. bucks for the anti-skip feature. Yeah. Well, and exactly. then even then, it was only like 60 seconds, then eventually 120 seconds. Uh-huh. And I remember it's still I, my, my first one only had like 15 seconds. And I remember amongst my friends in elementary school, we were like, watch how much I can shake mine. <laughs> shake. <laughs> like, that was it. the flex back then. That was, it was like, look at this. I can shake mine for 10 seconds and it won't skip. See, I had a I had a feature on mine, and I swear it didn't buffer. It almost had like an extra clamp or something inside that when you flipped it, then it held that CD. I, I don't know. I don't know. I could be way wrong, and it could have been buffering, and I was just... Well, and I never understood what was causing the issue. Was the CD moving, or was the laser jiggling? I don't know. Probably That's both. Probably a mixture really? of both. All okay. of it. Because, yeah, I mean... That's very fragile technology. You know, it's not just a tape being Absolute. strung across. Right. And if you dropped it once, you're done. Yeah. <laughs> like there you go, half your you songs. You picked it up in any... daylight and you I, scratched you it. Scratched <laughs> it. <laughs> scratched my CD. The only benefit is you didn't have to like manually search for where a track yeah, started. Yeah. Oh. And when you fast forward, oh, too far. Rewind. Oh, dang it. Oh, did, it <laughs> did you ever cr- do the pencil rewind on oh, my cassette? Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> Dude, it's like pencils were made for that. Yep. Yeah. Or You're vice versa. How about the... Uh, the Which came little... first, the tape or the pencil? <laughs> <laughs> How about the little tape deck that you plugged into your CD player? In your car? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. After you plugged it into the headphone yeah, jack. You, you stuck plug it, in it into your... your Discman into the headphone jack, and then you plug yeah. that into your tape player. I still don't get how the freak that worked. <laughs> right. <laughs> that was crazy. Like, that's that's advanced technology <laughs> <laughs> right there. Area 51, thank you. <laughs> can, I, can I just say, I was listening to something. As far as technology goes, we lived through the biggest technology boom. Yes. Like, oh, we're, yeah. like we're still in it, mm-hmm. but we in the matter all. of like 20 years, dude, we went from pretty much like nomad technology to incredible mm-hmm. technology. Yeah. And there was this, uh, Walkmans with double A's. Yeah. To freaking telephones that have access to every song on the planet. Uh-huh. Well, I can't remember what I was listening to, but there was, it was either a podcast or something and they were like, oh yeah this kid was making fun of me for sending emails. He's like, who sends emails? And it's like, <laughs> everyone still sends emails. But that's just it. It's like the kids growing up. They're like, who sends emails? What is that? Back in the nineties, mm-hmm. back in the nineties, emails didn't even exist. That's how, that's how fast technology has grown a, is because their, their time frame is so messed. Like it happened within 20 years, but yet they feel like it happened over 30 years ago. You know oh, what yeah. I'm saying? Is they're like, what is that? Nineties. It's like, dude, email came out in almost 2000. You know what I mean? Like it was like right no, there. Mid, was, mid to end line. It 90s. was in nineties. It was like 97. Yeah. yeah like annual, almost 2000. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's still a prevalent technology. You yeah. know, those things the like at the point where the kid, like a, a, let's say a kid born in the late nineties, by the time they're old enough to either even need to use email, they're using other stuff like text message. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Like it's just, we, we've gone through so much technology so fast that, I mean, we've probably wasted so much money on tech just for music. Oh, if my you goodness. think about it, yeah. cause you had that tran the, the, we went from the Walkman to the CD to the, then the CD needing the tape to mm-hmm. play in your car to then yeah. all of a sudden and then the having, radio transmitter. Yes, and then, the yeah. Then you have the CD player. Cigarette lighter. Yep. And then uh-huh. you have the <laughs> FM transmitter and then you had the Bluetooth transmitter and then you had, and it's just like, bam, yep. bam, bam. And it's, it's so fast. Yeah. You want to know what I wasted my money on? CDs in general. Yeah. Oh. oh, yeah, dude. I have, like, at my house still, like, 800 CDs just sitting in the sleeves, sitting there. Doing I had I had so many I CDs. I remember when this happened. Yeah. So many CDs, and probably only 5% of them were burned. Like, they were actual store-bought and CDs. How my collection is. And I had a ton of them. I, I don't know. I dare say thousands of dollars worth. And they got stolen out of my oh. car. It was my sophomore year of high school. And I sad thing is, is I'm positive it was a friend. I don't know who, but it had to have been a friend because it was only my friends who knew that my hatch, I drove a Ford Explorer at the time, my hatch didn't lock. The, it was broken. Inside job. And only my friends knew that that hatch didn't lock. And so I know for sure they Dumb. crawled in through the back and... See, oh, I, so I also had a mass, like one of those 200 CD, CD like leather book uh-huh. things. And I was all about, I was all about buying the CDs too. I was like, if you love a band, you know, support them, buy their stuff, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I left that stupid thing on top of my car. 
Oh. Drove away and it disappeared forever. And then I was like, screw it, burn them all! <laughs> <laughs> See, and that's what I did afterwards. Yep. I had yeah. to go to friends who had mm-hmm. burners, and it's like, all right, I need to I replace need to copy all these. all your music. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, even you, you go back to our parents, and my dad had to go from record to eight track to mm-hmm. tape. So it's like... Dude, yeah, I had, a, is crazy. I had a wood shop teacher who had an eight track in the shop. Yeah, so we would listen to eight tracks all day, like during wood That's, shop. It was great. My parents growing up had an eight track in the house. It's so weird. had a record player. My dad had a record player. He'd mm-hmm. put on. We had a record yep, player. Same. Then you eventually had those stereos that came out that had all three: the record player, the CD yep. player, and the tapes Dude, all we, in one. <laughs> growing up, we had like a decent little uh, sound station. We had these like Did big you, speakers. Yeah. Uh huh. And we had a five disc CD changer. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh. You open the lid and all five discs and it would spin around and pick it up and zzz. yeah yeah. Oh, so cool and all the receiver Did your, stuff. Did your uh, like your main like control panel was it like a stack of yeah it was like, like probably i don't know can't remember if it was two or three yeah because ours had like one specifically for radio one pacif- specifically specifically <laughs> for cassettes and then they had the one for cds and then i want to say there was one just for sound control but yeah and then mm-hmm. it, it had the surround sound speakers and everything and I would hold rock concerts in my basement oh, with yeah. that thing. Oh, yeah. So Big good. old rock concerts. So we had good. a crease <laughs> in our carpet that in my head was the edge of the stage. Yes. And, dude, it worked out perfectly. <laughs> I mean, it was... I would slap hands with the audience. <laughs> I mean, I did this right up until we moved out when I was 19. I'm this not kid, well, okay. This kid's going places. <laughs> well, let's, let's take it back again. We were talking yes. about Walkman. So I, I remember, I want to say probably the first cassette that I listened to all the time was one my uncle gave me, and it was called Wacky Weirdos. <laughs> and it was just a bunch of dumb songs. <laughs> like Flying Purple People Eater was oh, on there. Oh, yeah. Um, this... this uh, this other one was like, dang me, dang me, take a rope and hang me. Oh I don't know. Gosh. Wow. It was kind of not know, anymore. Right? Right? Canceled. <laughs> Canceled. And it, I can't remember. I feel like it had some Halloween I songs had, on there, too. It was it was wild. I had a Donald Duck one, and it was Donald Duck doing the, like, it was the ding, 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 ding. And then he comes in doing the, <laughs> and he's, like, going off and getting all Battle mad. Battle of and, the banjos with Donald Duck? Yeah. Hold up. Well, that... Halloween music was that from McDonald's or something like that? I don't know. I swear I remember theme. having a Halloween themed tape. It from was like a, McDonald's or something. Maybe this one, Wacky Weirdos album. Yeah, it had like Witch Doctor, Monster Mash, Ahab the Arab. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember that song. Wow, <laughs> Cookie Cookie, Purple People Eater, Transfusion. And it was a it was a white cassette. I remember yeah. that being cool because it was oh, white. Yeah. yeah, I remember the white. Babysitting Boogie, Dang Me, <laughs> Mr. Custer and the Flying Saucer. Pa, what is that? Parts one and two. Huh. My first cassette was one I found in a church parking lot. It was like gr- Great American Classics or something like that. Nice. Or yeah, something like that. But I had a bunch of songs too. Was it like hymns? And stuff. No, <laughs> it wasn't. Had oh, it wasn't at like, too. <laughs> it was a uh, shoot. Who's the guys who? Uh, oh, they have the one guy who sings really low. You guys probably don't know. <laughs> <laughs> probably I, not. Well, I had no. Go ahead. No, well, if you're still thinking, I'll let you think. No, I had a tape that was specifically Anthony. Like it was like Anthony's tape and all the songs like had my name in it. Uh, And being a little kid, I'm listening to this thinking it was so awesome. About you? Yeah. It's all about me. One of them, like I still remember, it was like, hello, Anthony, how do you do? (laughs) (laughs) I I would sing along. I'm good. I'm so good. I had a friend in high school. Her name was Ashley. And she had a a short CD of songs about Ashley that she listened to when she was sad. (laughs) (laughs) Oak Ridge Boys. Oh, oh my <laughs> baby is American made. That right. song, you know that song. Dude, no thanks. How so, about, how about you, real guys? quick, can we oh. talk actually None about the, the genius <laughs> technology of the cassette? Because remember, it would only have half 
half the music on one side and half oh, on the other that's side. that's right. And when you listen to it, it was rewinding the other side. Yeah. Yes. So you constantly could just flip it and go. As long as you went through the whole seat. Yeah, yeah. Whole yeah. Manual you repeat. The whole thing. Uh-huh. You flip it over and play through it, flip it over, play and through it. And you could it. do the same yeah. thing if you were recording. You could record all of side A, flip it over, record all of yep. side B. Yeah. I almost forgot about that. Um, yeah. Actually, I do remember my first tape. I got it for free from Cinemark Theaters, Lost in Space. Really? <laughs> the movie, yes. Nice. We went and saw it in theaters. That's uh, my dad had just gotten a security job working for Cinemark. And so me and my mom, it was like opening night. Me and my mom, for their, their re-grand opening or whatever. We went and saw Lost in Space, and they were giving out posters and oh, a CD. That movie, that movie nice. I loved that movie I know. as a kid. I actually really loved that as a kid. It's Wait. still one of my favorites. I love it. But The that part when the... Matt LeBlanc's mask yeah. comes down over his face, I was like, oh, I yeah. Mean, I imagined that's what Iron Man was going to be like. I was like, look at that. He's like Iron Man. <laughs> 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 Wait, are we talking like friends, Matt LeBlanc? Yeah, yes. dude. No he was, a, he's, yeah. He's, he was the pilot. He was B.A. He, he was. was. So cool. It was wow. a good one. Huh. I remember having a crush on the girl. I know you did. Oh, did it, right? <laughs> Man, it's not what? Alicia Silverstone. It's the other girl that looks kind of like her. Heather Graham. Yeah, it was Heather that, Graham, but not her. The the, the daughter. The daughter. Right? The Penny? younger one. Yes. Penny. Penny. Who turned out. Turned. She grew up to be the the hot girl from Mean Girls. Mean Girls. She's the. Oh brunette. my gosh, that's She's right. She's the brunette in Mean Girls. That is right. Heather Graham is pretty hot too, though. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. She's also in Rob Zombie's Halloween. Yes. <laughs> but um. <laughs> No, on the whole thing with uh, Lost in Space, like I had mentioned, I had a Mortal Kombat soundtrack, and it was from the movie. Mortal Kombat. It was from the movie Mortal Kombat, and I had watched that movie hundreds of times. I mean, hundreds of times. And so I had the music down to the movie. So I would put the cassette on, and then I would play fight, and I would know exactly what fight scenes to do at what point Dude. in the song. And I mean, yeah. Don't mess with good, this guy. That was like one of <laughs> like the first one of the He's first like, big like techno albums. <laughs> oh yeah. Mortal Kombat. <laughs> Dude, that also was I feel like that also came out around the time as Jock Jams. Do you remember Jock yeah, Jams? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. we would blast no. them. That Tootsie Roll. That oh, Tootsie that, Roll. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so good. I hated that song. <laughs> I, <love> that song. <laughs> I hated that song. Or Space Jam. Space Jam. Oh, that was had Space Jam. Yes. That was one of my first CDs. We I played think. it in elementary, yeah. like Welcome in, to uh, the Jam. Yeah. Did, Did you see they're making a new one with LeBron? Yeah. Yeah. They actually released the press info or video or the Yeah, yeah. Oh, assemblies. So we play them in assemblies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Too bad. Uh, cruel. Too bad Pepe Le Pew got cut from the team. Yep. Yeah. What's crap? Stupid. He got Did can- he really? Yeah, he got canceled. He got canceled. the cartoon because he he was He's a rapist. rapist. He was a little too rapey for him. <laughs> he was a little too forward. <laughs> but yet, but yet they can play the song WAP at the Grammys. Yeah, a yeah. family, a family award show, and freaking Cardi B plays WAP. Did she really? Oh, no they joke. Just wave their WAPs at each other. Yeah, they practically. Whop. Never mind. <laughs> did they really? <laughs> we did. Yeah. Attach they did. We'll look at it later. Wow. Well, okay, we'll look at it later. No thanks. But, <laughs> no, they had the you space jam though. Oh, sorry. You know, sorry. Sidetrack note. Did you? You know what's so contradictory about that is there's a video about Cardi. I want to say she was doing like an Instagram live or something, and she she put that song on and was like mouth like singing it or whatever to her phone. Yeah. And then her daughter came in the room. And she looked back, saw it, and she immediately like panicked, turned Hurried it off, and turn turned it, it down. I do remember that. And you're like, okay, so if your daughter can't hear it, but you can play it at the Grammy? Yeah, it's like, right. oh, so you know it's terrible garbage, but yeah. you're still making everyone listen to it. That daughter's yep. like, my life is a lie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Oh, goodness. What was, so what was your first tape? My first tape was... Uh, I want to say Mortal, that Mortal, Mortal Kombat, Kombat one was it. I yeah. I, brought, I had to text my dad. I've been doing I thought trying it was to the find Anthony it. Tape. I can't find. Actually, yeah, going back that far, it was the Anthony tape. Oh, was it the Anthony tape? I text my dad because I'm trying to remember the name of the band, but there was this like grungy. Oh, that's I know that's a collective soul. Collective soul. That's what it is. Yes. Okay, so that was my very first tape. Oh my goodness! Yeah. Nice. So I I actually I like stole it as a kid from my dad. Like he'd let me have it. I loved it so much. Yeah. So I had this little tiny kid karaoke, and I 
slap it in there and hit play and I'd go around the house singing it. Whoa. So <laughs> that reminds that the, me. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, is that the, the green album with the circle in the middle, whatever it is? Not a clue. That, oh, I mean, anyways. dude, that was like, <laughs> so my you doing that as a little kid reminds me, we have, <laughs> we have home video of me. I have a Mickey Mouse guitar and I mean, it's one of those cheap plastic, the strings are plastic yeah. guitars, yeah. but I come downstairs just jam, like rocking out to Skid Row's 18 in Life. Ooh, I love that song. Where it's like, <laughs> 18 in life, you got it. And I come down, I mean, I'm just rocking out. Blaring it. And that, that's the stuff. I, I grew up on the hair bands like Skid Row, Motley Crue, How Poison. Does he still have tonsils. Dude. Dude, Dude. Yeah, Sebastian Bach, he's got a voice. Mm-hmm. So that Johan, it's so funny. <laughs> so it's funny because my dad was also a big hair metal, but it was almost like the opposing hair metal from your dad. Okay. Like my dad listened to like Twisted Sister, ACDC, <laughs> Van Halen. Like Van Halen was ACDC. We were fans Nine Inch of. Nails. I'm trying to think. Were they a hair band? They're not that they're not old. old. Well, I mean, like, wait, what? Do you... I guess he's not that old. It's only one dude, isn't it? I don't know. Pretty sure Nine Inch Nails is just one dude. It is. Is it? Yeah. Mm. He mixes everything himself. I thought he was 90s. Wasn't he early 90s? I think he was 90s. So that's era-ish. Yeah. Yeah. you're talking about. Yeah. See, yeah, we... Journey. Journey. Trying to think of like... Nine Inch Nails was formed in 1988. Shut your mouth. That's serious. Wow. Boom. Mic drop. Journey and (laughs) Rush. Weird. Journey, Rush, bands like that. That was more my mom. And then my dad was more like Motley Crue, Metallica, um, Guns N' Roses. Gotcha. Dude, I had so. the biggest mixture of musical influences as a kid. <laughs> Me too. It explains a lot. No, it, explains- it was all over <laughs> I'm the just place. Kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, so well, after my wacky weirdos, my next like first cassette tapes that I listened to constantly, like almost to go to bed. Shania Twain and Leanne Rimes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Loved it. Well, well, bad, I mean, to, 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 par- to parody you, my mom, like my dad was into that kind of 80s yeah. metal stuff. Uh-huh. But my mom in the 90s, dude, she was into like Matchbox 20. Oh, <laughs> yeah. She was into Shania Twain. Yes. Yeah. Jewel, you yeah. know, <laughs> REM. Mm-hmm. All I just want to sing stuff. all these. <laughs> all right, dude. Mm-hmm. Well, oh. that was like my sister was all into country, like hardcore. My mom was all into that soft rock, anything on FM 100. So like we, so like I said, we have FM Olivia, Olivia Newton, John, like Brian Blair on Saturday morning while we're doing chores. That's not soft rock. Is that soft rock? Yeah. I, yeah. yeah it's, it's considered yeah. easy listening. Rock. Not really? my favorite. Wow. But then my dad was always just like classic rock. Like, so not like super far into like the hair, either side of the hair band, but anything that would show up on the arrow, we would listen to. <laughs> See, my dad was never really into music, so I got my music from my mom growing up, which was FM 100. Yes. Wow. So, <laughs> Explain yeah, why we, it took you so long to get into music. It's exactly. Rough, dude. Exactly. <laughs> my mom and dad. Like, this, is, this stuff sucks. Why are you listening to it? <laughs> my, dad, my dad was into stuff that my grandpa was into. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I got spurs a jingle jingle jingle. <laughs> wow, that's, that's what we would listen to. How My far? name is Sue. How do you yeah. do? Yeah, I'm Johnny Cash. <laughs> oh man. Hey, the Cash isn't bad. I love Cash. Good. Cash isn't bad. Yeah. Cash is one of the few. Is he considered country? Yeah, yeah he's mixture back yeah. and forth. No, he's country. Because I was going to say he's one of the few countries that I like. Just well, I like his voice. So, quick side note on that. But he's also considered rock and there's roll. There's that too. song yeah. that I was going to say. There's that song that both Nine Inch Nails and Johnny Cash do. Oh, Who yeah. did it first? It was a uh, Cash. Cash did it. Uh, no, did he? no, it wasn't. I thought Nine he Inch did Nails the did remake. It first. He did a remake. Cash did are the remake. Are you sure? Of it. Yeah. I I think yeah. he what did. What song are you talking about? I hurt myself. Yeah, hurt myself. Yeah, it's Nine Inch Nails. Now that could make sense because he did record it when he was older. Yeah, he was an old dude. That's true. So he could have done a remake. In my eyes, Johnny Cash has always been old. Right, he's like he's been always eighty. Like that's that's just him. That's true. And then the, and on the flip side, though, he looks exactly like Joaquin Phoenix. So he was he was real hard put away. Wet. <laughs> Imagine that one. <laughs> he was. <laughs> he married Reese Witherspoon. Oh, right? She looks so, so young weird. still. Yeah. <laughs> That's how I relate to these guys. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Oh, yeah, that's the one, the guy with the hair lip, right? (laughs) Yep. Uh uh (laughs) Um, Oh, what was I going to say? On, uh, 
Dang it. Now I forgot what I was going to say. Joaquin Phoenix. He did that role too good in Gladiator. I still hate him. Oh, oh that right, dude. Gladiator. That's he so did true. It too good. It is so good. I'm mad at him. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, you. You know. <laughs> I was going to say, my second tape that I ever owned was Eve 6. Oh, oh, nice. Yeah. I love yeah. that. Yes. What was their one real popular song? It was, uh, something about rat. Um, no, it was, uh, want to put my tender heart in a blender, watch it turn around to a beautiful yeah. oblivion, rendezvous, and I'm through with you. Copyright. <laughs> <laughs> we, just, I, we, we sound just like them. <laughs> <That's great. laughs> Copyright. Guys, we should just start a band. Just singing. I'm in the band. Quintet. So, <laughs> yeah, I like funny that. story about that band. I went and saw Eve Six in concert. Nice. Um, that song at the very end of it, it talks about tying him to the bedpost. Yeah. Tie him to the bedpost. Yes. And so <laughs> I bought their shirt. It was a baseball tee, and it said on the back it was Eve and then number six, and on the front of the shirt it said tie me to the bedpost. <laughs> <laughs> How old are you? Uh, I would have been in junior high. It was probably about 14, 15. Anyways. And you had no idea what it meant. Fast forward a couple of years, and I wore it to seminary. Oh, <laughs> no! nice. And my teacher made me turn it inside out. That's hilarious. Yeah. Sorry, I have to correct myself. It wasn't Eve Six. It was oh. Smashing Pumpkins. Oh. Okay. Oh. Also right. cool. Still it was, uh, I but feel like a, a rat in a cage. Oh, okay. Just yeah, that's all in my head. Rage. I'm still just a rat in a cage. I wasn't a big fan of the pumpkins. I, I liked, love the pumpkins. I liked certain songs. I never certain listened songs. to them. I'm with you. Like straight. Up. That when uh, Eve Six did Jumper too, didn't they? No, or was no, that was third Jumper eye was third, third Eye Blind. Third, third Eye Blind. Half of Eve Six, I guess. Really? No. Third. Six. Oh. <laughs> We're playing a numbers game. I know that things. was a reach. <laughs> you know, that was who, a good song. You know who? Speaking of Eve Six, one of my favorites that I feel like fall in the same category was Lit. Oh, oh, I loved Lit. Dude, yeah. I loved Lit. But now we're getting into like early high school. Yeah. I That's true. junior high. No, I was still in junior high. Yeah, Lit's junior high. Lit's junior high. Then again, I, I, had, I, I had a weird journey through the music. <laughs> See, Lit was one of the first guitar riffs I learned. <laughs> I guess, yeah, I guess you know where my confusion Because I was like right there with Blink-182. You know where I, I kind of get mixed up though is I, because I went to school in Colorado, I went to high school in ninth grade. Like uh, the actual oh, high school. Oh. It was 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th. Because they, the they had middle school, say that. right? Uh -huh. Way to save, then, way to save it. <laughs> so it's, no, 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 for real though, because <laughs> all my memories of it are in high school. Yeah. But I was in high school yeah. in ninth grade. Yeah. But that came out in seventh grade. <laughs> no, I wasn't listening to it when in did seventh grade. I think it was eighth grade with some 41. <laughs> Dun 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 dun. Yeah, oh, does that, that does this look infected? Yeah. That was same with like the good, the very first album of Good Charlotte. Yeah. Well, and all the small things, Blink-182. Simple plan. So Simple yeah. plan. See, what was that one song that oh that was like a play on words? I'm a dick. I'm yeah, addicted, addicted to you. you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's so good. But then Lit had one, too. Yeah, can the, you? or uh, They did that same kind of wordplay. Oh. Um, what song was it? Oh, I know which song you're talking about. Uh, I'm so addicted to you. And you're such a dick to me. That's what it was. <laughs> oh, I'm thinking of something else. Oh, yeah. That was a good song. But, yeah. But I hear it. See, and it's funny. I didn't I'm a get dick. it. I grew I'm addicted up. addicted to you. <laughs> I grew up on the, like, heavy metal that mm. it took me a sec to get into, like, Blink-182 and the mm -hmm. more punk rock bands. But, yeah, junior high. I, I don't know if it's because all my friends at the time were listening to it. But then, yeah, I, t I fell hard because at first I was like, oh, this is stupid. They all sound like, look, just they're whiny. whiny. Yeah. I'm like, I hate yeah. this. Like Green Day. I'm sorry, I'm like, I dad. can't be perfect. <laughs> my, yeah. my dad would always nasally. do this it's motion. super nasally. Yeah. Same with he, Newfound Glory. Yeah. 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 My oh, dad was always like, why do you listen to this crap? Sounds like they're nuts or in a vice. <laughs> <laughs> and he would straight up like mime. He'd put a vice on the table, mime throwing his nuts in it, crank it, and he'd be like, oh. <laughs> I'm like, what are you doing? I mean, he's not wrong. I know. Because, yeah, I, I did. Like, even going back for my sister, my parents would say they remember my sister back when seatbelts weren't a thing. She would jump <laughs> on the back seat, hanging on to the two front seats, bouncing, singing along to Black Sabbath. I mean, that's... Dude. Yeah. We, we grew up in that kind of family. We loved Ozzy and Metallica and... Um, 
Yeah, those what are you shaking your head for? No, I'm not shaking anything. I never even was like, what's your story? You got he, a story. He hates no, Metallica. I hate Metallica. I didn't know I that. Like, what? Well, yeah. I'm not that was my first it. CD was Black Album. Yeah. I can listen to like three or four songs of Metallica and that I don't like. Them. And I had to sneak it because my parents really? were not into any of that. So I'm yeah. just I'm just plain not into any of that music. Metallica, Bro. Black Sabbath, that type of music. Like, I just good you, music. You guys all seem to have been like set on your path of music. I took a real wayward turn. I was first. all over the place too. Oh, I straight up okay. So after Shania and Leanne, <laughs> then came Backstreet Boys. And then sing. Oh yeah, uh, I got into that. We don't talk about that era. No. And then <laughs> Britney Spears, Jessica Simpson, okay, Mandy Moore. Okay. I was into oh. now. To my in in my defense, <laughs> some of the music I listened to is because I had a crush on the singers. Uh, yes, yeah. yeah. touche. Obviously, touché. Christina Aguilera, Christina Aguilera, Mandy Moore. I had Mandy a huge crush on her. Mm-hmm. Then I got into Spice Girls. <laughs> <laughs> the Spice Girls came out when we were in sixth grade, and Britney Spears yeah. came out in fifth grade. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Do you remember watching so the Spice Girls movie? So I was Girls listening movie? all this stuff. I did watch that movie. <laughs> but I remember to this day asking my dad to drive me to the store so I could buy a CD. And we get there and I bought Spice World. The movie? <laughs> he, no, the CD, Spice World. Oh, that's a CD. Uh, it came out with like That's with the, the one movie. with all the singles, the big one. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's when they were like big. Okay. They were still like super the popular. Of Bewitched. Wasn't that the name of their movie that though? Bewitched. Yeah, I loved them too. <laughs> Wasn't that the name of the movie oh, though? Spice yes. World? Okay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, <laughs> so we go there and we buy it and he doesn't say anything. Like, but I could just tell that I'm like, this is probably one of the most disappointing moments <laughs> in a father's life. In my father's life towards me at this point. My son is buying a CD called Spice World. Son, yeah. Do you like girls? <laughs> <laughs> or do you like to pretend you are a girl? <laughs> and I just I just know he was just like, I'm not I'm just not gonna say anything. Whatever. <laughs> Let's just go. He was dying on the inside. Well, yeah, dude. Oh, I was, I was listening to a bunch of that stuff until a, and it was a, the time of Napster because oh, then my brother yeah. started getting into all that other stuff like he was getting into um, 311 he was getting mm. into lit he was getting into collect soul stuff like that <clears throat> and so he was using Napster and downloading yeah, you're songs. way off on time man this was like 2001 that's crazy because that <laughs> stuff all came out in the early like yeah, late 90s. I wasn't. I you wasn't listening to any yeah, of that. In the times, yeah, I was. Behind. I was listening to all the like pop, the poppy music at the yeah. time. So I yeah. wasn't into any of that stuff. Yeah. Then my brother started listening to it, and then that's when I came. Like I then you know was looking up to my brother, mm. and and so I went away from all the like poppy stuff, any country stuff. Loved classic rock, and then all the stuff my brother was listening to, and that turned into like my pop punk stuff and. And all the stuff that we ended up listening to and where we are kind of now. My brother had a huge influence on my music as well. Because mm -hmm. all of a sudden he was having me look through his CDs and I didn't know about any of this. I was kept sheltered, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And See, yeah, he went on his mission, left me his CDs and that's when everything changed. My brother didn't leave me his CDs, but I but, found them. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> just kidding. He didn't go on a mission either, but my parents <laughs> took him away. <laughs> 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 I did, <laughs> but he had like God smack, and I was like, "Oh, what is this?" Oh, like, see, I just remember that. See, and that's what I was gonna ask is, uh, um, at what like based on your your preference today, can you remember a time when your music really started to to settle in and go in the direction it is today? Mine still's not settled in though. That's my issue. Oh, yeah, yeah. mine still has still morphed now. But mine's still that, changing. I think the biggest, I would say to answer your question, the most influential time of music in my life was high school. Yes. Yeah. So starting in ninth grade, when my brother went on his mission, left me his CDs. That's what turned into Newfound Glory being, I think at that time, my favorite band. And then you know, some Forty Ones in there, Blink One Eighty Twos in there, like all of those bands that all just thrived from that moment in time. All American rejects. All American rejects oh, were huge. That was, like, that was me. My brother first. My chemical romance, the used. <clears throat> well, my brother first recorded for, or burnt for me. He's like, you want to know a good band? And so he actually burnt for me AFI. 
Oh, yeah. I remember and that. Got their album and listened to that all the time. And then he burned me Stain's Break the Cycle Ooh, album. That's a good one. Yep. And that's what started it for me. And then I went on to, um, I remember the first three CDs I actually bought. I gave my buddy 30 bucks, asked him because he could drive and I couldn't. And I asked him to go to the store and buy me three CDs. And I got some 41s. Does this look infected? Mm -hmm. um, All American Rejects new album mm. and the soundtrack to Triple X. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I had the one had Rammstein yeah, with Rammstein. Yeah. 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 And I lost. I loved that one song. Um, I don't know who sang it, but it was like the heavy one that was like, "Now is the time for me to rise." Yes. To my that was slip a good dude. The grind. That was slip knot. I think that's slip knot. No, it wasn't slip knot. You guys remember? I don't think so. I don't know. If See, it I never got into them though. I couldn't. I could never do like See, Tool and Slipknot. I like oh, I couldn't get into Tool. <laughs> they were too much for me, and they were tool creepy. Tool's weird, and it was dumb. It's freaky. If you like classic, don't say that. I love Tool, and the reason I love Tool is because it's so. Oh, what's the word? It's such a complicated. Their music's so complicated. See, I and mean, that's what I've heard. I have a respect for the band. Yeah, it's but just, I, just oh, yeah, a thing. I can respect no. the skill, but not like it. Yeah, <laughs> that's how I feel about a lot of country. I feel yeah. like country artists and their lyrics, their they're very lyrically talented. Vocally um, talented, if you think about it. Yeah. Like, even though it, like, can sound annoying, <laughs> definitely. It does. But, like, <laughs> some of their, like, the actual vocals are impressive. Yeah. yeah. It was Hatebreed. Hate very what? impressive. Hatebreed. Hatebreed. Yeah, that's that. right. Hatebreed. Yeah. And that also, sorry, I cut you off, I think. I'm my bad. <laughs> he got excited. Oh, you're I did. I did get excited. Because <laughs> um, the other one on there that got me really going for music was Drowning Pool's Bodies. Oh, ah, yeah. Drowning yes. Pool. But that, was, that wasn't, that, that was, was the re-altered Bodies. That was the, re, yeah, that was the remix one. That's my yeah. mom's favorite song to play Guitar Hero on. Are you bodies? serious? Oh, yeah, dude. She loved it. And she played the drums. And so Miss uh, FM 100 over here is like, let the body set the flame, let the body set the ah! <laughs> and, like, and then you got that signature double symbol. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. And she loved it, dude. It was so funny. So yes. back, to, back to my question as far as like where I could say my, I started going heavy because like I said, I was always into hair bands. I'd probably say Metallica was the heaviest band I listened to at the time. But I started to really steer heavy with Godsmack was mm. first, their first album, the one with like Whatever and Voodoo. Mm -hmm. um, Voodoo. But then I would say the real kicker was Disturbed. Oh, yeah. Down with the Sickness. I mean, when he comes in with the, oh, wow. I mean, you're just like, oh, my God. I actually <laughs> love, I love his remake of that Simon and Garfunkel song. Sam the hell, um, the hell darkness. darkness moment. Yeah. yeah. I freaking love it it's when beautiful. he sings it. It's nuts. But see, I went down. I didn't go down the the darker path. I was <laughs> newfound Thanks. glory, and then I found which I I still claim is my probably my favorite band ever, which was Brand New. Okay, like, I had one I, of their albums. I started listening to them in two thousand one when their second album had come out, and I was a huge fan ever since. I think out of every every band I've seen in concert, I've seen them the most. And it's because like their lyrics were to me were incredible. Like they were just so deep and different. And like, it's, it was crazy at that time in high school. Like you don't know what the freak your hormones and feelings are doing. Yeah. And so like listening to music and hearing somebody put your feelings in, in into words mm -hmm. was like crazy therapeutic and yeah. crazy. Like you, you Park. connected mm -hmm. with those people. Yeah. yeah, no, for real. Lincoln yeah. Park. Yeah. So on the thing of lyrics, do you remember sitting down with your new album, pulling out the sleeve oh, out yes. of the case, and it had the lyrics to all yep. the songs, Looking and you would, at all of them? Oh, and I would be so mad when they didn't have the exactly. lyrics. Exactly. Oh, yeah. oh. Seriously, pissed me off. <laughs> <laughs> and back then, you didn't have like quick access, like Genius or anything yep, like that. Nothing. Like, oh, That's because you're trying to decipher what they're screaming the whole time yeah. as you're listening to the song. <laughs> now, now for me personally, I want to say for the longest time, maybe even in elementary school my taste in music was so broad and it stayed that way my entire mm -hmm. life. Like I, 
I kind of like you. I would bounce around like my sisters would be jamming Spice Girls. Yeah. And I'd yeah. be like, all right, like, this song's kind of dope. No, 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 we're having a good time. No, no, no. <laughs> I don't remember that one, but I just remember like their bangers. Like Britney Spears. I oh, remember yeah. in fifth grade, this guy kind of like. Oops, I did it again. He he had a VHS <laughs> recording of the music video, Oops, I Did It Again. Dude, I actually he had, I he, did too. He passed it around our classroom like it was drugs, man. Like oh. one kid would go home, she had We're such, talking skin tight, no. freaking red jumpsuit? She, no, had, no, that she was, had a sassy voice. Oh, you said Oops, I Did It Again. She had a Wait, very voice. Wait, song? Sassy baby voice. You're thinking baby. baby One More Time? That one. Give me Baby One More yeah, Time. Yeah, school girl. Killed me yeah, baby yeah. One yeah. More Time. Oh, yeah, yeah, dude. Over. Oh, but I mean, yes. like I jumped I, all over the board. I had I went from you know boy band. I like my thing was in sync. I don't even heck yeah. I never heck. listened to Backstreet Boys. I was Boys. more of there a Backstreet were, Boy were, than I an listened NSYNC. to both of them. Um, Loved them both. But then I went into like hardcore punk. Like we did like Offspring. Yeah, I, want, I got buddy. into like AFI. Yeah. Um, See, I remember that about you. Was you were a diehard Offspring I fan? Love Dude, Offspring. I lo- I, Offspring was fantastic. Yeah, they they put on a good concert too. Yeah, yeah they, they do. do. I've yes. never seen them live. Uh, Dude, them, I, uh, I saw them at Warped Tour two or three times. Two thousand five, I think, or two thousand six, mm. and it was really, really, really hot. <laughs> <laughs> and the police were on the side with like garden hoses and just like kind of spraying people and wow. the crowd was massive and uh i think his name noodles right yeah yeah he looks at him he's like he's like what you guys call that a hose that's not a hose and he like leaves the stage he comes back out with a fire hose <laughs> and he sprays the entire crowd with a friggin' fire hose that's, that's awesome. awesome it was wow. so dope yeah but I mean, <laughs> like hair metal, I would enjoy them. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. So like country, I even enjoy. I even enjoyed like I would, Toby see, Keith. I would enjoy certain Woody. songs. Yeah, like honky tonk, badonka donk. Who doesn't? I don't honky like that song. <laughs> but but donk, donk, donk. Have you seen the music videos? I hate that song. <laughs> no. You see, fools, maybe that's, that's why you don't like it. Red so <laughs> low go. Yeah. yeah, I hate that song. But literally all over the map. You you give me a genre and I could tell you a band that or a person mm-hmm. that I enjoy from that genre. And Same. here's my argument is my music taste changed with the season. So like <laughs> springtime, summer was like Springtime was I like was the same, gangster actually. rap, kind of poppy. You know, you had like the DMX, the because that that screams <laughs> flowers and allergies. Well, no, because it was like it was like a bassy tones where you could roll down your your car windows and have like the thump hit <laughs> real hard, and you could cruise with your windows down. And then summertime was like beach t- beach vibes, so you had like country and stuff like that where you could enjoy waterfront. And then fall was like acoustics, dude. I and then like wow. winter was like death metal. I'm like, whoa, just pissed because I couldn't go anywhere. Yeah. yeah, I remember like life in that time. Life was a lot of it revolved around music. Like me and my friends were always we were looking up music, trying to find the next like new band, like mm-hmm. new pop punk or alternative rock band that was gonna be cool and listen to it before everyone else. Like my my. In that genre, my one like claim to fame is that I was listening to Fall Out Boy before oh, yeah. everyone knew who they were. Like right before, because I was listening to them when their second album came out, the blue one. It's their older stuff. That was and their then, second album. Yeah, from uh, and then from under the cork tree came out, and that's when they got big. Yeah, isn't that crazy though? How like if you knew the band before everybody started hearing about it, you felt so cool about you yourself. Did. Oh, you're yeah. like, oh, you're, you're just uh, yeah, this is Fall Boy. Dude. Oh, you're, not you been, I'm you're, you're not a real fan. I'm a real fan. You're not a real fan. You came in when they were dude. Popular. That was yeah. huge in that time too. Like yeah. with well, the scene kids and everything, it was like, harder to come across music yeah. then. So if well, you could get your hands on it yeah mm-hmm. to to parody you i worked at walmart in the electronic section so i Dude, had to organize remember when they had the, the cds yeah i had to organize all the freaking cds that would always get out of alphabetical order mm-hmm. and so while i was doing it they had the little scanner where you could scan it and get a sample of the music mm-hmm. yeah and that's when i found um uh, who's a band who's a band that sounds just like fallout boy i'm trying to think my brain just went oh, blank. my chemical romance no 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 or no, no, no 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 um they're still panic prevalent at the today. Disco. Yes, Panic. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah, found, you showed me I that. I found Panic mm-hmm. way before they ever hit yeah. their stride, and I felt so cool when they finally hit that stride. I'm like, <laughs> I found these guys years ago. I, I remember you showed them to me 
in your Honda Accord with your 15 inch subwoofer. Yeah, <laughs> dude, I miss that thing some days. It was great. I loved that car. Yeah, like, you can't you can't even hear well, the and song. Then, uh, and then I had I had my Astro. Like, listen to the lyrics right here. <laughs> <laughs> dude, I had my I had my Astro van with two 12 inch subs in it. And the entire thing was like a subwoofer box. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, you yeah. base you, it so hard. You know what I'm talking about. Then, yeah, then when you roll down your windows, uh -huh. it amplifies. Your like parents, it gets louder. Your parents knew you were coming home ten minutes early. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there he See, is. I hear him rolling down. The I street. had I had a ten inch sub, and I remember Kelly hooked me up with it. And the main reason I went smaller is because of my taste in music. I wasn't into the heavy bass stuff. It was more of the rock where the punch. I wanted to hear. <sighs> the distortion and the guitar solos and everything like that. So I had some speakers that had that crisp sound mm -hmm. and then enough sub to give me the double bass as they're coming bro, in. The but. drops in a day to remember with freaking subwoofers. Oh yeah. Oh my God. See, gosh. but I wasn't into a day to remember when I had my sub. Bro. It was yeah. so good. I know now. Oh, I'm still mad that you sold that car, man. I'm still mad. That was great. I was in the Accord when I got wrecked. Huh? Oh yeah. Well, yeah, but that thing still lived beyond that. Did it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I drove that, that for years after that, and then okay. I got in a blindsided hit on, in Cottonwood. Oh. That totaled it. But man, I miss Jacelica. Yeah, Jacelica. The Jacelica <laughs> was cool too. I miss her. <laughs> she was wonderful. Touchy, touchy subject. <laughs> <laughs> Dang kids and car <laughs> seats. Now, on that note, though, <laughs> like to this day, there's songs I hear, and I immediately am back in my Astro van, like driving around Colorado Springs. Cause you know, I was there the majority of my high school or, or, or like with us, like before my mission and stuff, like certain songs. And I'm just transported right back there. Oh, like for where sure. We would listen to the feelings like, cause it, unfortunately I feel like now because we have so many other responsibilities with families and jobs and all that stuff, we hear music and we're like, yeah, this is fun. This is cool to bop to, but it doesn't have that same, like, Nostalgia. Nostalgia. Deep mm -hmm. feeling that you felt when you were listening, when uh, you were a kid in high school, not having a care in the world, and you're just you're absorbing the music. Well, yeah. and you don't have the emotional connection. Yeah, exactly. Because, like you were saying, when you were a teenager, you have that angst, or you can, it's like the band was able to actually put <laughs> your feeling into musical form, and you connected to it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And to go really heavy into that, I swear, every time I went through Heartbreak, Eminem came out with a new album. <laughs> Bro. Dude, it was like he was, clockwork. He was talking to you. He, he, didn't, he didn't really let you know when a new album was coming, but I knew every time I broke up with someone, there was a new album. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, speaking of Heartbreak, I remember one. I... I can't, I got, she stood me up for the night. I don't remember if we were actually a thing or what, but I remember I got stood up and I was so excited for the date and I was just pissed. And I told my mom, I'm just going to go for a drive. And I remember I had just bought the new Godsmack album at the time and it was faceless mm -hmm. and the song came on. I F and hate you. <laughs> oh, yes. Dude, talk about down. vibing. I was, was just, that? I was like, when it comes in with that, yeah. I was just like, oh, hell yeah. <laughs> I'm, just like, I'm oh, thinking man. of the puddle of mud one. Oh, she effing hates me. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. I remember there was a song by Brand New. It was called 70 Times 7. And it was, it was super deep. And I remember I sent it to this girl that like broke my heart. And it was brutal because there's, there's a part in the song lyrics where it basically says, um, I hope you think of me when you forget your seatbelt and again when your head goes through the windshield. Whoa! Oh, yeah. oh it, was, it was a dark, like... Wait, who was that? Brand new. Oh, that was brand new. And yeah, the yeah. story is, like, when they, when they wrote... When he wrote the song, Jesse Lacey, he wrote it to his ex who left him for the, the second singer that was in Taking Back Sunday. Okay. So there's a song in Taking Back Sunday um, that they wrote in retaliation. Like they had like a battle of songs. <laughs> it was wild. So, sorry, I got to throw a little quirk in, just on the whole battle of the songs. Two of the biggest, or I'm trying to remember one of them. Crap, now I can't remember what their retaliation was. But the song We Will Rock You by Queen mm -hmm. is Towards Kiss. 
Oh. Do you know that? Mud on your face, big disgrace, uh-huh. talking about the paint on their face. That was their song, Bashing Kiss. Dude, and see, Kiss has one back to Queen, and I can't remember which one see, it was. See, I never... I, I only... I liked, like, two songs from Kiss, but I freaking loved Queen. Queen in was... High school. But now musical battles have taken a whole new level yeah. into just like greatness with like logan paul what that was sarcasm okay i was, I was like what are you say, i was like he makes music gross <laughs> oh they do you didn't know this uh-uh. no dude YouTubers uh, the less i are know about ridiculous. him the happier i am See, yeah <laughs> i have to say i don't know who logan paul is oh you're then lucky you're, you're lucky you're okay oh, good. So okay he, yeah. they're like these youtubers that want to be like pretty much everything at once and they suck at everything. <laughs> but, but yet they they're following. They don't think they suck at everything. Yeah. Oh, those are the worst. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, they're douchebags without talent. See, I think the the modern <laughs> the modern music battle that I loved was the Machine Eminem, Gun MGK, Kelly and yeah. MGK. Oh, dude, Eminem, Eminem heard, dude. Him, heard him to the court where he's no longer even a rapper. He's nope. a pop artist. No, now. I was gonna say his new music sounds like like yeah, poppy Old, like Blink One Eighty Two kind. Yep. You know, like he's gotten like kind of pop punky. Yeah. In fact, he has it's a weird. New, he has a new song out that I I was never a fan of him and actually kind of like one of his new songs. Well, and he's dating that... Megan Fox now. Oh, dang! Oh. Was he dating Halsey? No, that was G Easy. Who was he? Was dating? I'm oh, thinking. Dude, so I love G Easy. Machine well, Gun Kelly this conversation. Dating... I don't know any of that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I remember he was dating somebody to where somebody took a picture of them at the beach. And it's like Machine Gun Kelly with his blah, blah, blah date and someone comments and you're like, you mean to tell me neither one of these is Justin Bieber? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, speaking of JV, I actually dig that kid's music. Uh, uh, he's not an annoying yeah. tween. Dude, he's actually a great like guy. Him, he's got some good music now. I he's like running a church. Well, he's doing all sorts of stuff. I was stuff. also mad that he was dating... Selena Gomez. <laughs> Are they that still would do that when they were no. like teens back then. I know, man. but I still liked her. <laughs> <laughs> like you had a chance. <laughs> hey, Have salty. a cardboard cut out. <laughs> salty. <laughs> like that, that reminds me. Remember with us with that uh, Emily Browning, the oh, girl that was oh, in. Yeah. We got in a fight. Yeah, we, we were got like a fight. Well, at first though, <laughs> we, we both agreed that she was so hot, but we were like, we're so dirty because we were like, I don't know, eighteen. I think we were oh, like right, right at eighteen, and we're like, she's like twelve years old. This is gross. And then we looked it up, and we're like, she's our age. Yes, <laughs> like as if we had a was chance. Was that when Sucker Punch came out? Or no, this was that when a series of unfortunate events yeah. came out. But <laughs> dude, that I mean, side note, oh. it drives me nuts when they have <laughs> when they have like. Older girls portray like yeah. high school girls, mm-hmm. but then they still act like slutty. Because <laughs> then you're like, oh my gosh, you're hot, but you're like 16. Ew. And then you're like, wait, you're 20. I'm okay, but I'm still confused. <laughs> <laughs> do you remember when we went? This is getting way off topic, but do you remember when we went and saw Kick Ass 2? Mm-hmm. And we're all sitting there in the theater, and that cheerleading scene when the one girl is doing basically like a pole dance without the pole, mm-hmm. and all of us are sitting there like, Oh gosh, I hope she's of age. Because <laughs> <laughs> she's supposed to be a high school girl doing this dance, and we're just we're like, like this please, is awkward. <laughs> please be old enough for me to not feel guilty. <laughs> uh, anyway, back on music. <laughs> so let me ask this question. You brought it up earlier. I want to know when did you guys come across your favorite band? Did now? Yes, like your. Pretty much your all-time favorite band. Like Cam said, brand new. He came across them, you know, when he was in high school. Mm-hmm. Just that band that hit him hard. Like, So my my two favorite bands over my lifetime, I would probably say the first one was Metallica. Metallica held it for a very, very long time. They still are, m- mainly for their old stuff, though. Is their new stuff any good? Like, I know they released an album within the last few None years. None of their They're stuff d- is good. Shut up. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I was about to say. <laughs> I, I, I almost just got I, defriended right there. There's some right songs there. I, of theirs I really do like, but I've never been able to just listen like to Like I an said, album. three or four songs. That's about it. No, their, their newest album, I can't remember. It's like hard, Hardwired or something Livewire? like that. No, it's like Hardwired to Self-Destruct or something yeah. like that. That one's actually pretty good. Um, the worst one was Sane Anger. That was terrible. That wasn't very good, yeah. But everything before St. Anger was fantastic. Is that the concert we went to? No, we went to Death Magnetic. That's right. Didn't that one come out but when we were like in 11th grade? Death Saint Magnetic? Anger? No, St. Anger. Anger. 
something like that. Never it's mind. got the fist on it. Yeah. Remember Breaking but, Benjamin? Oh, oh I didn't remember. remember. My. Breaking Benjamin. They're still they're dang relevant. Two years? Oh, yeah. Like, I way before you can call them relevant anymore. I would call no, them relevant. Oh, yes, they oh, are. Oh, oh, they just no, came I'm, out with... I'm in your boat, Austin. <laughs> Well, he switched bass play guitarists. Okay, and the whole, it's basically that, a whole new band other yeah. than him. And then they, yeah, and then start switching everything out, and it doesn't sound the same. So, oh, speaking but it's still great, kind of like, great to me. Anyway, kind of like when Hawthorne Heights lost their screamer, right? They just and they just a totally downhill. different band. But yeah. hold on, guys, I wasn't <laughs> done. <laughs> Freak, <laughs> neither was so, I. Neither neither let's go to you. Yeah. <laughs> 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 this whole time. So with with them, they were. <laughs> I'm done. No, keep we're going. Out. No one's we're talking. No. We're so, listening. With with Breaking Benjamin, they're still good, but they're it's not the same as when they first came out. It's it's completely different, but it's still good. I, I love Breaking Benjamin. I do too. Uh, same. I mean, they're yeah. great. I I don't listen to them now, but that's there's a lot of bands I don't listen to now. I listen yeah. to them all the time, actually. But I did love I did love them, and I remember seeing them before Godsmack. Mm. Yeah, that was cool. Oh, when they cool. opened for Godsmack. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But no, so yeah, my favorite my favorite bands was Metallica for the longest time, and now it's a day to remember. Since I'm wearing their shirt, I had oh, to. Yeah. Oh yeah, but I'm the song that got me into a day to remember, as funny as it is, was a cover of the Fray. They're over my head or uh, cable oh, car. So good, their covers are phenomenal. Mm -hmm. yeah. But so like I found that one, and then that made me want to look more into them, and then I came across Downfall of Us All. And mm -hmm. and then it just took off from there. And they are phenomenal. I'm trying to remember all the bands that have kind of like replaced main play like main singers and stuff. Like there Four was years. Escape the Fate. Escape the Fate was They were one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. oh, well, now, even with there's I think I actually didn't get into them until the second singer. Oh really? And then and the, so I still liked them. And then the singer went off and started his <clears> own thing. Falling in reverse. Falling in reverse. You know one of the one the craziest ones to me though, to this day, is that from first to last. You remember them? I know the mm -hmm. name. Yes. They were kind of freaking weirdos, honestly. They were making themselves puke all over the place. What? They were weird. You don't you ever saw those? No. And their music videos are like puking and on stage. They're like puking. Well, anyways, the lead singer went on to be Skrillex. Oh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then what was it? Post Malone. Oh, yeah. He now was Post a... Malone tried to be a guitarist for uh, who was it? There was a there was one of those like it was a rock band I yeah can't one of those remember. rock bands he Isn't tried weird he tried to be one of their guitarists and he like didn't make the cut mm -hmm. and so then he went off to do his own thing and now See, he's the you know one like that industry. that blew my mind was Stone Sour Corey Taylor mm -hmm. oh yeah yeah. And he went off to do Slipknot and see, and I thought it was the other way around, but Stone Sour was around a lot longer than Slipknot. Slipknot was another one of those bands that I really loved. Well, They're see, and I feel like there's so many like weird connections like that. So like Jesse Lacey, the singer brand new, he was the bass, the first bassist in Taking Back Sunday. That's why when there was that drama, he made the other band and they were fighting. But then Katy Perry was in a gym class heroes music video Cupid's chokehold. I love that song. <laughs> oh, yeah. She's the girl at the end that he falls in love with in the crowd. So she wasn't even a singer wow. at this time. And mm. she's in this like music video for what are they're like a rap rock punk band. Yeah, they're kind of they're just like one of those pop rap. Yeah. Which cause that song was was him and they had um they had uh gosh, Patrick. Patrick, what's uh, his face from yeah, Fallout Boy? Fall Boy was his last name. Stump. Stump. Patrick Stump. Yep. It almost stumped you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Where were we? <laughs> talking about music. Talking about favorites. Oh, yeah, oh yeah. here's one that might surprise the world here. But uh, Nickelback... Puts on an incredible concert. I was going to ask. I don't even care. That was, I was going to ask that. What was the best concert you've ever been to, hands down? Ooh. And I was going to say Nickelback, and that was a road trip with you. That one was so. Who else was with us? It was me, you, Mary, and Justin. Okay. Yeah. Dude, it was so good. That was a dope concert. I don't care who you are. Everyone plays like they hate Nickelback so much. You were all bopping to their music back <laughs> when they were popular. Every single one of you. That, I love that Nickelback. and Creed. Creed's in the same thing. Yeah, yeah, I love They're Creed. Great. Easy to make fun of now, but they were fantastic. It's just yeah. all those voices like... 
like, well, I guess Nickelback and Creed don't have that same voice, but hanging on the vowels. Yeah, I remember when Creed came out and it was like Creed, Pearl Jam, um, Default. Uh, I love, love Default. All those oh mumbling. Yeah, mumblies. Just that deep burr, Nirvana. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. That kind of grungy. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah, it's a 90s grunge, mm-hmm. really. That yeah. that was it. That was kind of their it. that stuff too. Yeah. They were their own yeah. genre. But yeah. Well, so what was everyone's favorite? Oh, sorry. I guess we should finish this question first. Your two favorite bands or your favorite bands? It was just your like what yeah, was the just, <laughs> we're off just into your, the weeds, man. It was just yeah. your favorite band, like when you came across them. Like it's it Mine started with Newfound Glory. Yeah, I don't really have and I've got artists that span time that I can like that definitely jump out, like Offspring, like Shine Down. Shine Down, yeah. Like uh Breaking Benjamin. Like a lot of them overlap, but dude, I could mm-hmm. think of music that I listen to. Mm-hmm. I think of it as like over. what what band can you listen to literally every song they've ever made? Yes. Every album, every I can't song. do that to Cause that for me was newfound them. glory. It was and brand new, like mm-hmm. to the point of, I would search out every piece of, I would find demos. I would find every piece of music they ever created. Covers anything. Uh huh. Anything mm. at all. Even my favorite bands, every music I listen to, there's, there's, there's music, something that there's a song I can make. <clears throat> okay. Skip that one. Well, yeah, all of them. See, see like I, a day to remember is another one I can listen to all their songs. See, I'm that way. There's definitely songs I could skip past, but if I don't, if I'm in the middle of something that I'm not going to skip it, I can still sing along to it and love the song. Mm -hmm. I'd say my top three that I can do that to, like literally every song is Metallica. Well, Metallica is hard to say because they're new stuff. I'm see, but Metallica up to a point, I guess, but Godsmack and Godsmack and a day to remember are probably my tops. Mine's like shine down. Shine down's one of them. And I love Atreyu, but Atreyu's, mm-hmm. I don't know. Gosh, or movie I don't know. scores. I like Man. Howard Shore. Yeah, I like I don't Howard know. Shore. Nobody probably here else likes movie scores. Like, no, I do. I like movie scores. Well, that's the Our funny thing. Movie score. That's, that's the one. funny thing is now at this point in life, I've found that there's some like I even listen to classical music. Like, like Hans Zimmerman. I every love Sunday, Zimmerman. I just throw on like 50 best songs done by the Lon- London Philharmonic, and I'm like, oh, this is a bop right here, and it's just like <laughs> of all these seven, four seasons or something. <laughs> I'm like this is great. That reminds me of the. Have you seen Blast from the Past? Yeah, yeah. With Brandon, Fr- where he's listening to uh, per- Perry. I think some old singer and um, and he's like, hang on, this is where it really takes off. And I mean, the song barely makes a little bit of a <laughs> a speed like, <laughs> and he's just over there. <laughs> oh my gosh! But um, were you guys gonna do favorites? Do you have a I, favorite? I can't really. I don't. Yeah, I'm not there anymore. I mean, I used to out of loyalty, but I'm not there anymore. Don't really have a favorite. No. They were great. Did I have great. so many like? bands artists i could list off but nothing that really dude i mean back in that day like i remember t- i tried writing down all the concert i'd been to and i filled out like an entire page jeez oh, i couldn't yeah, i same. couldn't all the bands how I've old seen. were you when you went to your first concert <sighs> seventh grade i want to say seventh it wasn't grade? acdc i, th- <laughs> I think I i'm went not to that fully concert sure too. i think i was i was like 17 I was 18. Really? Mm-hmm. I was 18. Well, because when I was younger, all the all the bands I listened to, Backstreet Boys, all, man, all those were like Delta Center concerts mm-hmm. for wick, and Wicked Expensive. And no one was going to buy me a ticket to that. And so then when I finally got into the groove of the music I liked, then it was much smaller venues. There was Warp Tour, oh, 35 yeah. bucks to see like 40 bands. Yeah. Yeah. See, I only went to, was it Warp Tour? Yeah, I only went to Warp Tour once. I did it twice. I went a handful of times. I saw 303 there. I remember that. And this was the... Were you at that Warp Tour? Anyone? I was. Do you remember that we were on asphalt and everyone was jumping? The entire ground was shaking. Mm. Crazy. Out in the freaking just asphalt outside. Man. And you felt the ground <laughs> shaking. You're like, what the freak is this? <laughs> It's weird though because I want to say toward that era of like especially three oh three I feel like bands got a lot shorter life lifespan yeah because it was like super niche but man they came and went like a flash of light oh like yeah three oh three I couldn't tell you the last time I listened to them but exactly. I was heavy into them for like a year uh huh 
Um, I think one that's still around that kind of blows Echo Smith. Do you ever listen to them? I remember yeah. their name. I remember seeing them we on the We found them. Yeah, on the Eddie it. Ball stage, which yeah. is like the lowest stage of the entire place. It yeah. was like a truck that opened into yeah. a stage. <laughs> <laughs> and the rest of them were actual stages. They were great. It was but they were so good. It was me and you and like five others in the audience. <laughs> yeah. and we just kind of like, like you guys are great. <laughs> Is weird. Well, when was your first concert, Zach? How uh, old were you? I would have been like eight years old. My aunt took me to, I think, was George Strait. Oh, that's mm-hmm. party on. How about I you, fell Chris? asleep. I'm not going to first lie. time you tried chewing tobacco? Right. <laughs> <laughs> but my favorite concert is Garth Brooks that I've ever been Dude, to. Dude, I bet that was awesome. He actually puts on a hell of a show. Oh, he he does. does. That he was, does. In well, that isn't. young era, like I, my family was into Garth Brooks and I freaking loved it. I every love Christmas him. we listen to his Garth albums. Isn't he like entertainer of the year oh, almost every year? Every Dude, freaking year. He yeah. just yeah. sang at the freaking inauguration. <laughs> yeah. He's a... Uh, really? yeah. I want to be his age and as athletic as that man is, he's jumping all over the stage, and running back and he's forth. He's not like thin, and he's not breathing heavy either. He's just like singing, and then he can go high, hold a high note for ten freaking minutes after he's been running for an hour. That we, man is we impressive. Found Chris's fashion Dude, right here. That, no, just that concert was an amazing concert. <laughs> do you remember? Do you remember? Are you sure he, he wasn't lip syncing? Uh, yes, I'm do you remember when he had a, a, his alter ego. Oh yeah. Yes. <laughs> What was his alter ego? Uh, like the rock. Oh, what was his so, name? So Chris Black? something. Chris, Chris Ledoux? Chris. No, no, it wasn't Chris no. Ledoux. No, I'm sorry. No, Chris. Oh, look it up. Oh my god. I think I had an alter ego. It was, it was so hilarious. stupid. That's hilarious. <laughs> but yeah, Garth Brooks is the man. His concert was freaking amazing. That would be a fun one, it actually. Was. And that's like comparing. I've been to Godsmack Spooled and Shine Down and all that. And I love all that. Mode. But that concert, I don't know what it was. Well, it, there's you nostalgia know, there, too. Because I mean, everyone sings. That that classic song. I got friends in it all no on my races. Actually, never heard Where that the song. The whiskey before. drowns and the beer mm. chases all your blues away. Well, yeah. now you're gonna start living because you're never gonna, gonna be to okay. Yeah. See, speaking next of time, concerts, that, standing oh. outside the fire. I was say, next time that's we crazy. see Tony, he's gonna come back with a hick hat. <laughs> Chris Gaines. Chris Gaines. Chris Gaines. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is so much. Look, oh he looks like head. Austin. Oh yeah. my gosh, that's he me. Looks like you. <laughs> that was like me in ninth grade. It looked like Chris Angel. That was all for a spoof. You know that, right? It wasn't like he was trying to. Everybody thought he was trying to come up with different music. He wasn't. It was. It was all like an act, a spoof. I guarantee you that's the cover story. That's I a don't cover. think so. <laughs> it's like for Snoop Dogg sure. when he went to Snoop Lion. He was already big. He was huge though. I mean, that dude's got so many number ones. It's an, it's. I impressive. think it was a it was a midlife crisis. He's like Tom Brady going to the Bucks. He's like, watch this. I'm gonna get number one as a new person. <laughs> 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 There's that's a whole oh. other genre that I never we never got into hip hop reggae dude I was big into hip hop Ja Rule I was I, I was, I was, I was only into them when it was like a club scene type thing I was in Eminem Doctor Dre Doctor Dre, Dr. Dre. Sad Snoop dude, I, I couldn't do da, 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 da. again there'd be there'd be songs and there'd stuff that I did really there. like but I yeah. think the, Eminem's I the only one really where I actually Eminem. bought albums yeah. and listened to it through Eminem and the only other one I bought was Nelly. Dude, I, <laughs> Nelly Furtado? What no. about <laughs> wow. what about Tech Nine? <gasps> Tech Nine? Tech Nine? Tech Tech Nine, Nine actually did get yeah, years good. Tech Nine? Dude, yeah. I would love to see Somebody? them live. They come here they're all the good. time. I've heard they're fantastic. Yeah, they go to like small venues. They're still around? And, yes. yes. Oh, yeah. I think um, I saw them at... Sorry. I was going to say on the concert thing, how you said you've had your great concerts, but something about that Garth Brooks one, one that actually really surprised me that's one of my top, and yet I don't listen to them, was Maroon 5. Yeah, I won tickets on through my work to my go heart. to one of their concerts. First off, I was shocked how many songs I actually do know. Uh-huh. Um, but two, man, what an entertainer! Uh-huh. Like uh, yeah, Adam Levine's got yeah. skill. Yeah, but I want to know what's the worst <laughs> concert you've ever been to. Oh, that'll be funny. Mine, worst? Train. Dude, I could see that. Train was horrendous. A wreck. Yes, oh. a train wreck. A train wreck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna tell you guys right now, and you're not gonna agree with this. Metallica, three eleven. Oh, mm, I could see that. Okay, All right. I mean, I it mean, depends they... on how much pot they smoked <laughs> beforehand. We, we, uh, me and my brother went to um, X ninety six's bash. I think I was there. Yeah, and it was at the the outdoor one. Whatever. Well, yeah, it's, Usana. So no Usana. One, yeah, we didn't want a hot box. Everybody. Well, yeah. So we went to Usana. <laughs> 
And you can see a literal cloud. It literally above was the like audience. we 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 got seats. We're great. Listen, to everything. Three Eleven comes on, and it was immediate. You could smell marijuana. Oh yeah, everybody's going crazy, and like. <laughs> That's, that's what they look that's like. what it was and we're just listening to it we got halfway through one song and me and my brother looked at each other and we're like this is horrible yeah like they did not they they were so chill like they just they weren't even into their own music they were just sitting oh they're singing. into it yeah, yeah. Oh, dude, i think i think you might have seen them on an off night because they do put on a heck of a show yeah i we, I we, we, I gotta say, we were like we're done missed opportunity you want to sell concessions Put them in a freaking sealed room, man. Let them be in a hot <laughs> box. True, bro. Like, the nacho munchies. sales go through the roof. <laughs> the only concert that Taco Bell caters. Like. <laughs> That's the concert they they got beer left over, but no soda. That's just, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, I exactly. don't think I have a worst concert. I have like worst bands at a concert, if that makes sense. <gasps> I got no, one. I got one and for it was you. with you. And me too. Oh. oh, was it? What? Well, I went. No, I went to one with them too. What? You it was. First. Wasn't it? Uh, so it was. We went to see Breaking Benjamin, but uh, Hollywood Undead. Oh, I remember them. That uh, that I was like a that tray. Oh, that's what it was. A tray. Which was great. A tray you opened. Yes. And <laughs> Hollywood Undead. And I was just like, this dude is a d bag. Like the oh, whole it was time. So bad. He was trying I remember, I was like, okay, I want to tough it out. And I think we stayed for like two songs. I'm like, okay, I'm out. Yeah, like we had I to can't. leave. Just yeah. the crowd all of a sudden changed and like you're just oh, like, yeah. I've been a freaking it's like, Where cesspool. have all you douchebags been this yeah, whole time? Exactly. Because it's like Atreus playing. I mean, everybody's got that respectful mosh pit mm-hmm. going yeah. on, and it was great, good vibes, and then yeah. Hollywood Undead comes out and it's like, I'm going to get shot. Dude, I'm leaving. That reminds <laughs> me, when I saw when I saw a Newfound Glory in concert, some kids started fighting. They stopped playing, started yelling at the kids to <laughs> knock it off. And they were like, you don't do that in here. In here, we fight together. You fight them out there. You don't fight in here. We're friends. And they literally stared at them <laughs> until they stopped. And then they went back to playing music. Yeah. <laughs> but, Dude, uh, I love it when bands but, do that. Yeah. What Remember was... when we went to see Black Veil Brides and I went because the band Versa Merge was opening oh, for me. I really yeah. liked them. And the singer didn't show up. That's right. And it was on April Fool's Day. So we thought they, the entire concert, they're like, Black Veil Brides isn't going to be playing at the end. They were the headliners. They're like, they're not going to be playing. The singer is stuck in California, something like that. And we're like, okay, yeah, <laughs> April 1st. <laughs> well, we get to the end of the concert and <laughs> Well, and that was no one was, they didn't play. He was wasn't verse, there. Verse emerge and drugs. Right? Uh-huh. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah, and, and yeah, they were good. Was... But then the, uh, the the other four guys in the band were out yeah, signing they, they're autographs. They're out signing autographs, and they're there everyone. to support. But the main singer wasn't there. He just didn't even show up. Yeah, Hollywood huh. Undead was jerks. <laughs> I just actually my last concert I just went to it was sorry, I'm gosh, already a it. year ago, over a year ago. Um, it was, who was the opener? The opener was like, can't swim. And I was, oh my gosh, it was so, cause the, the whole concert itself was fantastic. Cause first it was can't swim and then it was bare tooth. I prevail and a day to remember. And so the other three phenomenal, but uh-huh. this can't swim me and the friend I was with were like, they come out and start singing and, and he starts talking to the audience trying to get us pumped and then all of a sudden they start to play and he's supposedly singing and we literally were like oh this is a song oh they're they're going into their song now can't I, swim we're like can't sing yeah. <laughs> it was just like holy crap like i would never been like there's some songs and bands that i'm not into but they still have stuff where you can still get into the yeah. vibe and everything i'm standing there going I, I'm confused. Like, I just want to leave. Like, this is awful. But luckily, Dude, I, it was redeemed I, mm-hmm. greatly. <laughs> I remember I went and saw Foo Fighters. Oh, I want to see that. And that was a killer concert. But it was funny because, like, Cage the Elephant opened for him. It was one of the openers. And their drummer, I think, was, like, drunk. Oh, shoot. So it was actually a, a, a happy coincidence because Dave Grohl came out and played oh. drums. Oh. Or Cage the Elephant. Dave Grohl would have been dope. And it was awesome. And then, like, the concert was amazing. Like, I'd say right up there with, like, Nickelback and stuff. But it was so funny because they played so long, it got to a point where I was like, okay, can we, like, can we be done yet? Was this when they just came in concert last time? 
It was years ago. Oh, because they did the same thing when they came in concert, what, like a year, year and a half ago? Yeah, mine was It was the that. same thing. They played up until midnight. They played a long time. And they finally were just like, because I guess uh, in Utah, the you there's can only curfew. play, there's a curfew. I think you can only play till like 1130 or midnight. Mm-hmm. At USANA? At, no, this was at the Delta Center huh. or Energy Solutions or whatever it. it is now. Mm-hmm. Anyways, um, I guess they came on and they said, well, we're going to get fined. Let's enjoy the night. Let's have some fun. They played a four hour set. They played till two o'clock in the morning. Jeez. Yeah. They yeah. must have and done some like, mad cocaine. It's cool, but then, <laughs> yeah. cause you're out there and you're like, okay, I'm, I'm just real tired. I like your music, but I, I don't even have energy. Do you, I want to go home. Do you ever feel like, <laughs> like I always felt like when my legs got tired and I was like done, my voice was gone and I was bad ready to hurts. call at night. I, w- I felt like I was a bad fan. I'm like, <laughs> I promise I love you guys, but I got to sit down. Like I'm just like, oh man. <laughs> I, mean, I threw up at a brand new concert. <laughs> so this one might date me. My favorite concert um, was actually probably my favorite. Probably my first one that I can remember, minus the one my aunt took me to. Um, so the opener was, um, oh my, Dashboard Confessional. Oh, mm. they're good in concert. Mid band was E6. <laughs> oh, dang. And then the headliner was Weezer. Oh, that'd be that dope. probably one. And Weezer, when they played, um, having a blast just watching. And then all of a sudden the drummer starts lifting up out of the air. And I'm like, oh, what's going on? <laughs> Big old W, their their sign or whatever. He's playing on top of it. They've got flames shooting out the side of the W, and they are just rocking out. It was See, freaking awesome. And that reminds me of Godsmack. Oh, yeah, the Bateos, that, the Teos de los Tambores or whatever they call it. What? The Battle of the Drums. Oh, <laughs> it's so. It was. I so remember good. my first time seeing Godsmack was at Saltaire, and Adima opened for him. Oh, I loved Adima. Yeah. Dang. Mm-hmm. Um. But I remember, yeah, I remember watching that, and all of a sudden, the drummer's drum set starts to wheel off to the side. The singer had walked off the stage, and he starts going into that beat, and then all of a sudden, the second drum set rolls out, and I was just like, what is this gloriousness? Like, it was, (laughs) and they start going off on this drum off, and oh my gosh. Beautiful. Yeah, the so good. Amazing. You can find it on YouTube. Well, uh, one of the times yeah. they did it on YouTube, but it was oh. like f- a good like forty minutes of just drumming. Yeah, and well, and then Soli goes off on the bongos too. Oh, yeah. I mean, beautiful. Oh, so good. And yeah, hands down, Godsmack I, is my favorite live. That's when Austin's too. dad threw him into a mosh pit and yep. then jumped in after him. <laughs> yep, that was terrifying. <laughs> that was so my terrifying. first, and that's also my first experience. It was so funny, and that's also where that big dude. Remember that really big dude got in the middle of it and everyone was waiting for like the drop and he was just like standing there getting ready <laughs> and then he's just like hunkered down and everybody just whoom, yeah, yeah. They all, <laughs> like, ran at basically him sandwiched him ends. right oh. in the middle and i want to say he collapsed he was huge too <laughs> he was dude concert moments like that are awesome i think i might know my worst one i'm because i'm trying to think and all of them have been pretty great but uh i remember going to see uh, to see sherwood Oh, uh, yeah. And I didn't really know oh, them Sherwood. much. Sherwood, oh my goodness. Yeah, right? I didn't really know much about them, but the openers were a band called Tokyo Rose, which I was the only time I ever heard of them, and then Alexis on Fire. Ah, okay. yeah. And I remember I hated them. Oh, really? I did not like them. First of all, the dude comes out, and, and this was at Club Boomva in Ogden. Remember oh that? Oh my gosh. So that dog. <laughs> literally, like, the roof is like <laughs> saggy. <laughs> shorter than on this basement, dude. Uh-huh. And, like, yeah, saggy. And, like, it's just. It's oh just my junk, gosh. Dude. The windows were, like, painted, so they were dark. <laughs> and uh, he gets up there, and somebody's like, there's like. 15 people someone's like play this song and he's like i'm sorry we don't take requests from you we only answer to satan i'll just wait over here Jeez. <laughs> and then you question the venue and, Got right? it. and i was and i was hanging out next to this guy and i was just like oh this is weird and we kind of like talked a little bit and then they got off and they're like, next up is Sherwood or whatever. And he's like, hey, I got to go. I was like, okay. And he walks up on stage and picked up the guitar. <laughs> no oh! way. I was like, oh, dang. I had no idea. <laughs> wow. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh man. Oh, and see, and that's why I loved those bands because they were they were trying so hard to make it that they were small enough that you could like talk to them, yeah. hang out with them. Mm-hmm. Whereas like, you know, you go see Foo Fighters, Nickelback, you're not even gonna get within a hundred feet of them. See, that's funny. Um Chase and Tom, they went and saw um Five Finger, Death Punch. Oh, they're getting cut. And Dude, I've wanted to see them. They actually afterwards went to the bar or whatever was close right by it or whatever. Uh-huh. And it's like a sports bar or whatnot. Uh-huh. And the lead singer was there. And he actually sat down, was having a drink, and Chase noticed him. And I guess Chase went over and talked to him. And him and Tom had like a conversation with him for like 10 minutes. Yeah, because he was a lead singer That's of cool. Mushroom Head. We oh. Mushroom Head. Yeah, I got okay. introduced to him. Uh, or not introduced to him, but <clears throat> met like who knew who they are when we went to go see corn and yeah, five finger they opened punch. for corn. I was like, who is this? Like yeah. they were awesome. And there was a band I've always wanted them, to see. Six AM. Yeah. And uh and then corn. Yeah. Six AM was Nikki Six from Motley Crue. Yeah. It was yeah, his yeah, band. Yeah. 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 Remind me, what was the lineup when we went to Boise? To Pickleback? Yeah, yeah. Do you remember the lineup? Oh, bro. I remember it was who so was epic, f- but I want to make sure that the lineup is correct in my head. Do you remember? I don't even know if I remember who opened for him. So, so we, this was, so it was out of state for us. So we actually rented a hotel <clears throat> for the night. We carpooled there and we went to the concert that night and then we stayed at the hotel and then mm-hmm. woke up and came home. But I want to say it was, there was one, the opening band I want to say was Sick Puppies. Oh, they're good. Yeah, they're, okay. yeah. I remember they're that. Good. And then the second band I want to say was Three Days Grace. <sighs> The third band was Breaking Benjamin, and then the fourth band was Nickelback. Was it Three Days Grace with the old singer? Yeah, it had to have been. Yeah, that's when they were good. I want to say so. I'm pretty dang sure well, that I'm, was the lineup. I'm not because sure. I was like, because <laughs> that was my first time seeing all of them, and it was at one concert, and I remember like. 6 a.m. put on a killer show. The, the and I remember you fell in love with the bassist yes. because it was a girl. Was that <laughs> see? I'm I keep I'm mixing that and God Smack up because I wasn't sure which one they opened for. Yeah, and then the because I remember she days, was she wasn't like wicked hot, but like her playing the guitar, the bass in front of me, and there was like a fan underneath her, and her hair was blowing super back. hot. <laughs> <laughs> and then and I remember I was like, okay, that was epic. Uh huh. And then. Three Days Grace came on. I was okay, like, that was Nickelback. That was freaking dope. Okay. Can Breaking Benjamin top this? Like, oh I, my don't, gosh, I don't think so. And then they came out and they killed it even more. And dude. I was like, my mind's exploding right now. Yeah. Nickelback. So can't, there's no way they can beat this. And, and then they, Nickelback came out and slaughtered and it. And then their freaking stage turned into like a transformer and like freaking monitors and lights were just moving oh, all dude, over it was the place. So cool. oh, and I remember man. it was right Jealous. when I turned 21 and they brought out uh, Chad Kroger, I think is his name, right? The lead singer, yeah, Nickelback. Yeah. He wheeled out this giant bar. That's right. <laughs> he w- And it was like all this liquor and beer all on this thing. And he just starts pouring these mixed drinks. We were drinks. right up by the stage. Yeah, too. we were in GA. Mm-hmm. And he starts handing them to these girls. And I'm like, what are they going to do? And he's like, hey, if you're in the GA, pull out your ID. And if you're older than 21, you'll, you have a drink on me. And sure enough, I'm like, I just turned 21. I pass forward my driver's ID and I get this giant solo cup back and it's filled. And I'm like new to drinking. I'm like, oh yeah, I got a giant beer. This is great. And I go to drink it. It's vodka and Red Bull. No, 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 no. It's a Jaeger bomb. That's what it was. It was a Jaeger bomb. And I was like, what is this? And I got tanked. <laughs> and it was the best concert I don't remember I've ever that. been. Yeah, yeah, that was. No, I remember so everything good. about that concert. Yeah. See, I think the best lineup. I wouldn't say just, surprisingly. I wouldn't say it's the best concert I've went to, but the best lineup. We drove down to Denver for it, and the opener was Mudvayne, which mm, pisses okay. me royally off because. The second band was Deftones, which I'm not a huge fan of, yeah. but the group I was with was there for Deftones. So they dragged their feet getting to the concert. And at the time I couldn't drive. So I was at the mercy of the group. So we got there just in time to see Mudvayne finish. Oh. And so we watched them finish, which they finished with Dig, which was fantastic. But um, then it was Deftones, Limp Biscuit. <laughs> I thought he could put on a concert. Oh, dude. Fred Durst kills it. <laughs> Bro, I, saw, I saw Fred Durst like 
six years ago with Chase, and we. It was sli- me too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we, like, who, 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 one of us gave him a high five? Was it? It was all of us because he got down and yeah, held yeah. the mic, and he the three of us were singing right it. here. But <laughs> that's awesome. But no, it was uh, Limp Biscuit, Lincoln Park, <laughs> oh. and then Metallica. Yeah, I forgot. And we I was... totally slapped hands with him, and I was like, you know, this had been really cool, like 10, 20 years <laughs> yeah, ago. <seriously>. <laughs> like, <laughs> I just feel kind of like before he had a bat wink. <laughs> 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 Dude, I love Limp Biscuit. They oh, were good. They could, I bet he puts on a good show. He was good. I still my, listen yeah. to Limp Biscuit all the time. My favorite line. Oh, my favorite lineup <laughs> was. I think you were there too, but we didn't go together. But it was like Adelita's Way, um, Stained. Mm-hmm. Ooh, I love Stained. They S- put on a good concert. Adelita's Way, Stained, Godsmack. Was it, was Bullet for My Valentine at that one? I don't remember. I don't remember. But Bullet. Shine Down. But Shine Down. So it was Godsmack, Shine Down. Adelita's way and stained of uh, the four I remember, and that was that was a good one. It was good. <gasps> Although I was, I was disappointed with stained, and yeah. then it was explained to me later that's unfortunately just how they are because yeah. he just stood there. He sang vocals were phenomenal, yeah. but he just stood there saying after a song, "Thank you," and then he would like wait, and then they would go into the next song, and that was it. And it was just like, come on, get that's some what like, he does. flair you know? going. And See, he that's- just. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, that's just his thing. They just yeah. he's somber and just sings a song. But I mean, if you just listen to him singing, the dude's got a voice of an angel. Dude, oh, he does. <laughs> yes, yeah. he does. That's why I loved seeing bands like Story of the Year because they would always like oh, Story they were of always the Year. throwing their guitars around themselves, and they had like they were wireless so that they could spin them around their yeah. body and not like worry about tangling up. But uh, Taking Back Sunday, like oh, I've never seen microphone? anybody manipulate a microphone like that. <laughs> Like he, yeah. he throw everywhere he threw it. He never once dropped it. Uh-huh. I think best stage performance I ever saw was my first time seeing Rob Zombie. Cause he had, it looked like a horror, like a classic fifties horror movie happening on stage. But in the middle of a rock concert at the same time, he had these giant robot things coming out and his big old drums. Like when he sang Dragula, Oh my gosh, that guy is an entertainer. Uh I would see him. I only like maybe 10 of his songs, give or take, but I see him just for the entertainment. See, I'm not going to lie. We went to his concert that one time. I was totally let down. And it's true that concert he was a letdown. Yeah. I was so bummed. I was I was so excited to see him. By the end of it, I was like, I'm because you ready pumped to be him done. up. I know it is. <laughs> well, that's the thing though is they don't. Yeah, they like. Luckily, I feel like a day to remember. Every time they've come in concert, they try to do some sort of wow factor. Like there's always just one weird thing <laughs> they never that they let do down. That's different than last time. So every time you take somebody, they're not let down. Well, the what? What's the one that stands out the most to you? Oh, the freaking the giant ball. hamster ball. The hamster ball. Oh, yeah. see, for me, it's when they had the makeshift house, oh, where then they yeah. opened the garage door and they were in there oh at, playing gosh. like they were in a garage band. Well, the best part was before that they had the big white sheet and they played a little movie clip of them in the house, like hanging out, and it was the the concert was called the house party tour, hmm. and they had a little video of them hanging out in this house playing or like just hanging out, having a party, all the solo cups everywhere. And then somebody comes out and he's like, guys, guys, we're on, come on. And then it shows them walk out of the door into the garage, like Mm -hmm. from a living room, from a living room, Mm -hmm. they go out into the garage. And then at that point, the sheet drops, the stage looks like a house and the garage door opens and they come walking out. I mean, it was just, it was way fantastic. Dude, I think that's the one I freaking missed. Oh. I don't know. wasn't there. And I want to say that even there, they pulled out the, the, hamster, the hamster ball, ball. and the hamster they did ball. the big confetti pops. Dude, heck but yeah, the, the confetti, like, the so confetti pops were randomly so hard. But they were so like hard that you were like, what is happening? <laughs> <laughs> like, it's like second sucks when it's like fight, and it comes in heavy, and then confetti. <laughs> and you're just it would like, be even better if it was like, I like the kazoo noise. It's like, <laughs> It was dude, so epic, guys. dude. It was like, you just I like, love it. yeah. Oh, man. They're one of those bands that everybody I say, it's like, if you're kind of on the fence about them, see them live mm-hmm. and your mind will be changed. They're like, so good. Oh, well, because they're me. just, they're just yep. bros. 
Yeah. They're all just buds. <laughs> it's so good. Well, and we saw we paid that to go see the VIP tour. That's right? right. And we went and we were able to sit on the lawn and listen to like a VIP segment before the concert. They had a little Q&A cool. session. You mm-hmm. could ask questions. And, and yeah. it even got, I want to say it got cut a little bit short. But he was totally cool, and we walked up and talked to him, if you yeah, remember. Yeah, I do. And I remember, and I was like, what's the most embarrassing thing that's ever happened to you? And he's like, do you remember what he said? Uh-huh. Do you want to share? <laughs> Isn't that what he said? Like, he had pants that were just a tad bit too tight? Is that, am I, I thinking fair, of... I think it's, yeah, I think we're on the same boat. And he, he, I forgot why, but for some reason, this particular show, he had to go commando. Bingo, yep. And he was wearing these jeans that were just a tad bit too tight. And he did some kind of move and it tore the crotch. (laughs) And he did the rest of the show with, if you were at the right angle. Twig and berries, huh? You had (laughs) twig and berries right there. I was like, that's dedication. (laughs) Yeah. Right. (sighs) That was, that alone was worth it. It was just like being able to talk to him just for Mm -hmm. that brief moment, Mm -hmm. walking into the concert Well, it's so fun because they're, I, I've always had the policy of like when I talk to famous people, I talk to them like they're just some average dude. Yeah. Yeah. Because one, I'm like, I'm not going to puff your head up that much more. And two, I'm like, I just want to hang out. See, yeah. I'm that way until I got the chance to meet Godsmack. And then I was like a little schoolgirl. He's all, <laughs> dude, they put on. How are you? <laughs> such, <laughs> dude, I, I, I was like, we're stat. It was just one of those quick, simple, like sign, say hi, walk, yeah. get out. Like mm-hmm. they were sitting at the table and I'm waiting in line and I'm shaking. I'm like, oh my gosh. Oh uh, my gosh. What am I going to say? And like, I just. Oh man, I like worshiped the drummer, Shannon Larkin. I was just like, you're my all time favorite drummer. And I'm like shaking his hand. And oh my gosh. I remember walking into Pete Wentz and Patrick Stump at Warp Tour in 2006. Like they were just walking through the field and we walked in between them and they had to go around. We're like, oh, hey, good show, guys. Hey, (laughs) well done. They're kind of short. Yeah, that happened to me with uh, Memphis Mayfire, the main singer mm-hmm. of Memphis. Mm. That was great. See, see, that's the fun thing about Warped Tour, too, is you find them at their booths mm-hmm. all the time. Yeah. I've, I've, that's where I met, like, A Day to Remember a few times, Four Years Strong, and, like... See, that was me at um, Bash again. Mm-hmm. I actually, Bash is dope. I, I preferred X96 Bash over the Warped Tour, and it was because of their venue area. Mm-hmm. I hated going to the Utah State Fair Park. Dude, well, Warped Tour was exhausting. It, it was. was. wicked hot, and it was spread out over five... Five different stages, but they would also overlap. The exactly. Pants. Well, and why would you plan it in the middle of August? Yeah, oh, yeah. July. I think there was a few times July, like June. It was but, always so hot. Oh well, and that's I preferred. Uh, we loved X ninety six bash. I want to go to a concert. I went there. Yeah, yeah that feels like something ancient Seriously. now that COVID hit, man. Right. I. You know, speaking of which, I sorry. St- <laughs> I have sorry. No, I have tickets upstairs on my fridge to a post Malone concert that were March for last year. I've Jeez. got some to Godsmack. Has it been canceled or? Oh yeah, well, just, obviously. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was post, canceled. It was post Malone. <laughs> it, was post, it was postponed Malone. Postponed. Didn't get to go. <laughs> and then they were like, "We're gonna reschedule it." And then finally, they after a year, they were like, "Yeah, we're just gonna Big cancel play on that. words." <laughs> okay, go Zach. Bash, the bash. No, Sorry. I was just gonna say because um, they did the same thing. They tried to do the same thing where you can meet the bands, and they would actually have it set up to where hey these are the times they're going to be in the booth. And so I actually, one year, um, Amber Lynn was there. Oh, great. And great. Amber Lynn is my all time favorite band. Uh, um, I have every single one of their CDs. Mm-hmm. I've named my, uh, my first child after one of their songs. Um, and then that's actually mine and my wife's, um, one of their songs is our, our song, our wedding song. Uh, love really? Amber Lynn. And yeah, and so love that band. Like I listen, it's like how you are with brand new. Mm-hmm. Searched everything out for these guys, but I walked up and I remember I had to get in line. I missed a couple bands. I can't remember who they were. I know I wanted to see them, but I missed them to wait in line so I could see these guys. And I actually had them sign a few things. And I remember the whole time I'm walking through and I'm like speechless talking to these guys. I'm shaking their hand. Oh, you guys are awesome. My brother's like, tell them how cool they are. Like, tell them how like Tell them that you named your first child after one of their songs and that you and your wife got, you know, it's your song and stuff. And I'm like speechless. Yeah. I can't talk to them. And finally I get to the end and I like looked at all of them. And I'm like, 
you guys are so awesome. And they were like looking over and they're like, hey, thanks, man. <laughs> Another one of these guys. Right? Oh. And I just kind of went back to signing their stuff. Like it just, it was kind of awkward, but I was then you're, so starstruck. You're, struck, you're yeah. looking through the stuff they just signed. You're like, wait, what's this restraining order? I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but, stay away from us. But I brought a pineapple. <laughs> <laughs> Watch you guys pineapple. <laughs> oh, love it. <laughs> oh. Dude, that's, that's a good venue, too. Is it? I wonder if I was at that concert. Because I remember there was a time when they did the bash where they had the stage split in two and they just had a giant wall. So it would lift on one side and the band would play and then it would drop and then the other band would awesome play on the other side. That was awesome because you got to see everybody. <sighs> yeah, because it would flip back and forth. They did it at another Red one. Jump and apparatus was oh there. Oh my god! Oh. Yes. And I wrestled a dude for the drumstick and the little yes. douche took it from me. <laughs> <laughs> um, they would do it a lot of the times though as well in downtown Salt Lake. Yep, um, I remember that by KUTV. I can't remember what the. I can't remember what the love place that we're is dropping called. like X Salt Palace, right? KTV. No. We got an international audience, like, right? Yeah, no, we're who? expecting a check in the mail. Uh, <laughs> it was it was Channel Two's area, but it's uh-huh. right in downtown Salt Lake. And their stages was set up. They'd have their main stage, which had a big open area, grass stuff like that. And then their second stage was actually like an alcove type area. Mm-hmm. You'd have to go in, and you could still see. It was like an amphitheater, so you could still see them. They were killer. But it was like a mini warp tour. It was, it, but they would always only do two stages, and so you mm-hmm. could actually get more for your money. I felt like than you could at warp tour. Yeah. Didn't well, well, they got lamer and lamer. Didn't lost, they did? Didn't lost profits go to one of those? Yes. Oh, oh my gosh! gosh. I remember lost profits. You guys, guys are naming oh all these gosh. bands, and I'm like, holy crap! I haven't listened to them forever. Like, yeah. Amber Lynn? dude, Amberlynn was part of my like Christian. Oh, yeah, music I was section. all. I, I am yeah. an Amberlynn song popped Skillet. up randomly on my Skillet. phone like four days ago dude i can't tell and you i was like oh i forgot how much i love these guys i can't tell you how many times i've listened to their albums they're so like, good mm. i remember that who else was uh red big around Do you remember red? like red. surfer bands yeah. red's great yeah sugar colt yeah sugar colt. sugar colt was great but no it's the i dare you to move oh switch for it switch yeah. Yeah. oh my yeah. gosh yeah they're good too they switch put on foot. a really good yeah. concert too Dang. I've seen them like twice. Now we're going down memory lane over oh, here. Dude, that's uh, what yeah. I love. Just like here's whipping out these yeah. bands. My music selection for the next month is going to completely change again. <laughs> for real, all same. This, yeah, all these so, '90s. Like, can I tell you real quick about Lost Profits too? Uh, I can't remember the exact story. You'd have to go look them up. They are no longer because the original singer, I believe, he's in jail. Oh, what? For... He had a jacket I wanted. He's still I on too s- many rooftops. I want to say oh, it's for pedophilia. Oh, shut up. Oh, for real. It's something as bad as that. Oh, I can't man. remember exactly, so don't quote me on that. What but was I know it? Pedophilia. Standing on the rooftop, oh. I would have pushed the him off. The lead singer, like, <laughs> it's bad. Like, um, uh, one of my friends pointed it out to me. They're like, do you remember the band Lost Prophets? I was like, I love those guys. And he goes, look up what happened. You won't like them anymore. And I'm like, oh. That sucks. Well, there was, no. what was the band where the lead singer put a hit on his ex-wife? Wasn't that Escape the Fate? Was that? No. I want to say it was like Taking Back Sunday or something like that. Pierce the Veil? Maybe. Mm. Oh, that was the band. That was Pierce, Pierce the, Veil? the Veil? No, no, no. Pierce the Veil was the band that uh, Post Malone wanted to be the guitar stuff. Really? Oh, yeah. I love Pierce the Veil. Yeah, yeah. Great. Anyway, sorry. But yeah, I can't remember. But. That either way, I, I, wanted, I feel like I should know, matter. but I can't I remember. Thought, um, I know Ronnie Radke when when he Who's he that? went he was the singer of Escape the Fate before he went to okay Falling in Reverse. He went to prison. Yeah, he did. And they replaced him while he was in prison. And I thought he went to prison for being framed for something he didn't do. And I thought it was something along the lines of murder. Maybe like, it was that. But, I just remember but, all the punk goes pop. Right. Oh yeah. my gosh! Pump goes classic yeah. rock, yeah. all of that stuff was so good. Pump goes pop, pump goes rock. Do you guys remember Lifehouse? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Lifehouse. I loved they Lifehouse. Good. You guys remember uh, Power Man Five Thousand? Oh, yeah. <laughs> dude, I listened what to them a little while they ago because familiar. of the new Tony Hawk that got re-released. Oh, there. dude, that game is so oh, awesome. Bro. Yes, you guys saw the movie What's Grind, the song? right? Yes. You remember Grind? Oh, I love the Grind. album on that freaking movie was yeah. so, yeah. Good. so good. Hot Action Cop and all that. Oh, oh, dude, it was so good. That was a good what, one. What was the song from Power Man? I can't remember. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Um, I can't think of it either. It can't, it's off the tip of my tongue. It's uh, <sighs> oh, I know man. I know it, but I can't. Don't play <laughs> it. We'll get, I'm we'll not going to play it. With, uh, 
Bomb oh, oh, this is what it's like when worlds collide. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. I'm ready to yeah. go because I'm ready to go. <laughs> Do you remember this song? Unwritten Law. Unwritten Law. Oh, I loved Unwritten oh, Law. Oh, yes. I had oh, one yeah. of the guitar picks. I know Man. somewhere I have a box full of tickets. And guitar picks and it's crap. Like, it's like the cloud is being cleared. And right? Right? All these bands, <laughs> dude. And I just want to go back and listen to all of them. That's what I've been doing lately on my Spotify. Yeah. I sit there and I'm like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because the hard, the hard thing is, is like, no matter how advanced the current AIs are with all these music apps, you can't find these things together. Yeah, right. specifically like you, you look. pull up, like if I throw out like Fallout Boy and like create a station of this, I'll get like My Chemical Romance and then some Panic other at the disco. Yeah, and, yeah, but they never go deep into like yeah. all these other right. bands. Oh, yeah. yeah. Dang you, Algo. Yeah. All time low. Oh, <laughs> all time low. All time low. Dude, he Dude, looked. Yes. I remember for the longest time, you and the lead singer looked almost the same. You both have the soul patch. I remember you, the long hair. Yeah, I remember you used to mouth, say that all the time. Your guys' <laughs> mouth is the same. The flavor saver. Do you remember? Well, I loved. Uh, hey, I, had, I was rocking that soul patch hey, too. Hey, hey, all hey, American hey. Rejects. I loved All American Heck Rejects. Yeah. Great. I do too. Yeah. So I played, all you gotta keep is strong. Yeah. When I played lacrosse, that was you like our go to. Lacrosse. Yeah, I did. <laughs> That makes sense. <laughs> Why we had those lacrosse balls in the basement we throw into each other's nuts. Yeah. <laughs> Long story. We'll dive into that in another podcast. Uh, yeah. We we gotta we gotta wrap this up because yeah, we're gonna just go too all night. Good. But we just barely hit our stride. Now you're cutting us I know. off. Hey, Tears I mean, if we want to keep going, down, I was gonna face. Ding, ding, ding. I could. We talk. came as Romans. Oh yeah. Dude, I could talk music all night. I was gonna night. say. I was gonna I'm say. Okay. I ran into this band yesterday because it was Saints. St. Patrick's Day yesterday. <gasps> Drop kick Murphy's. Molly. 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 Drop kick Murphy's. Uh, uh, see, oh, I said that first. They, well, Molly. Molly. Yes, Molly. 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 The Drop kick did. <laughs> <it>. <laughs> Molly. 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 They did a virtual concert yesterday. <laughs> huh. uh, and so they do one every, they do a concert every St. Patrick's Day. But for the past two years, they've done a virtual one. Them. Yeah, right. <laughs> Keep on that oh, that so yes. as I was leaving the house, Jenny was saying, Zach's into that weird music. And she brought up that one, that purple shirt or something. Oh, start you, wearing purple, wearing purple. <laughs> no, 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 no. You got to tell the whole oh. bordello. You gotta, go, go, bordello. Go, go, bordello. You got to tell the story of you and your friend wearing the oh, purple shirt. Oh, yes. Okay. So <laughs> go, go, bordello. I picked up a Warped Tour CD, a compilation CD that they put out every year. It was like. Uh -huh. Eight bucks. It's like now and you get whatever, 50 but songs. Better. Yes. <laughs> so, anyways, I pick up this band, this album, and I'm listening to them, and I come across Gogol Bordello start wearing purple. <laughs> I like, saw him perform, but oh, it was weird. Funny thing is, I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. This song is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I show it to my friends. It's so oddball off the wall that we're like, this is awesome. We come to find out that they're gonna be in Salt Lake Warp Tour. So what we did is we got purple shirts. <laughs> made shirts that said start wearing purple so we when the band's coming up we're thinking like it's going to be a little bit packed so we made sure we go over there we're the first ones there when they're singing sure enough there was like only like 50 <laughs> people there <laughs> but so we're listening oh. to them like they see our shirts they're like oh hey that's awesome giving us thumbs up you know we're singing we're dancing with them having a blast well the set ends and they're like hey meet us over at our at our tent or whatever i'm like okay so we go over to their tent <laughs> and these guys are just talking to us. They're like, that is so cool. These shirts are awesome. Like, where'd you do it? And we're like, oh, we made them ourselves. And they were like, just having a blast. They thought it was so cool. Well, then the drummer comes up to me and he goes, hey, man, I, I want your shirt. And I'm like, <laughs> OK, great. Do I get something in return? Like, I need a shirt. And he goes, yeah, man. It was kind of bad because then he rips the shirt off of himself and it just smelt like B.O. Yeah. But <laughs> he rips his shirt off. He throws it at me and he's like, I want your shirt. And I'm like, OK. So I give him my shirt and we took a picture <laughs> with all of them. And like this was the coolest thing ever because it's like you talked about meeting a band that Ooh. is big. But I mean, they came bigger later on, mm -hmm. not as big out here. But we got to meet them and see them like. When they that were just so wild. And that shirt still stands up by itself. Uh, <laughs> right? Right? It's all crazy. It's actually, I um, I I should have kept it, but I eventually, uh, it's kind of funny. I gave it to the DI. Oh. Um, because their slogan was, um, 
uh, think globally, F locally. And so... Um, was it on the shirt? It was. They <laughs> nice. had every single one of them signed their thing, and then it was think locally, you know, or I think it was think, I can't remember it. Think locally, anyway, F globally. Something like yeah. that, yeah. That sounds and better. So that's, that's that how, sounds better. That's how all of them basically, you know... Mm-hmm. wrote on there and so that's i had the funny. f word written all over the shirt everywhere and i was like Man, i'm never gonna I go to wear this keepsake, i was cleaning Jordan. out my i should have i was cleaning up my closet one day and i remember um, i had a i just uh, i ended up donating and i was like i'm sure the di is gonna see this and they're gonna throw it right away but. i had an all-time low shirt that said free hugs on it and they all <laughs> signed it it was great that's nice. awesome i think i had amber lynn's signatures on oh. the shirt too I had a bunch of random This is going to be a, a, a real big stretch, but did any of you guys ever hear of the band called Caroline Spine? Yeah. Uh-uh. Oh, oh, I did. I, I love don't remember. Them. I remember them, but I don't remember all their songs. You know, I know. Go ahead. You, no, I was going to say, I know one that Austin will love. Ah. <clears throat> Silverstein. Yes, oh, dude. Yeah. Silverstein. Although I hated their so first good. album. I, I, I was did hard, not like their, it, but their, their first second one and on. on. Oh. Second one was Discovering the Waterfront, yes. wasn't it? Yes. Yeah, that one That's was fantastic. That's when I got really big into them. I loved that one, but the one I got deep into, oh, what was the, it was the other one. The train one? I think so. Where he sings with lights in one of the songs. It's either that one or it was the, the house one. I think it's the house one, actually, because the, the house one's a whole story about them, like, coming to America. Yes, yeah. And then he's singing with a Canadian singer. Her name was Lights. Yeah. And the song was so I think that good. is the house one. Because the was, house one was weird because all the songs interconnected to each other. Yeah. It reminds me of and a concert. I, I took a, a I took a chunk of one of the songs, just a guitar riff where it's like, like just quick or whatever. And that was my ringtone. Huh. That's awesome. I remember, I remember that. when you yeah. could do that. Can you I thought that, that was from... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh no, never mind. It was well, well, it was really my text tone. So every time yeah. I got a text, it played that just this quick guitar riff. That's I cool. I it. wanted to do that with that four year strong intro that do 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 and that, then how the guitar comes in where it's like do 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 and yes. it's like that. Seeing them at a um no, seeing a day to remember at Warp Tour. It was the first time I saw them and they played Downfall of Us All. Oh. That's when they started their concerts by just, they weren't on stage, but they'd start that da 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 oh. And they would say it and then everybody would start clapping their hands and we're all getting ready and they just lit up and immediately that entire crowd turned into a freaking circle pit. Oh, yeah. No. Like you instantly know, just. <laughs> one of my favorite pit. Um, I wasn't in it because we had seats up in the thing, but um, that Denver concert that I mentioned, um, when Lincoln Park was playing, their their song, um, I don't know the names of their songs. I just know the songs. The one where it's like, uh, that one. Um, He, uh, what's his name? Mike Shinoda. He was like, all right, when this song kicks off, I want to see the biggest circle pit. And, dude, this was in the Broncos' new stadium is where the concert was at before a Broncos game ever played. The entire field was one giant crowd. The entire thing started to just move. It looked like an ocean of people. Uh, I was just, like, watching from above. Actually kind of glad I wasn't in it for the sake of being able to just see it. I was just like, oh, man. I got in one mosh pit in my entire life, and I vowed never again. I <laughs> really hate them, dude. I I've been in a few. Yeah, I've been too. in a ton, but I've never actually crowd surfed. Uh, I didn't see, trust never... any of them watching watching all the people fall. I was yep. like, I don't trust any of you fools. Yep. Oh. Crowd surfing is not like you see in the movies where they're just moving gracefully across the crowd. It's oh, like no, nope, they're rock over there. <laughs> they're yeah. bending in half as they yeah. fall to the ground, and like Ugh. I remember a concert where Jigby got knocked out because right. uh, some kid <laughs> he was moshing. And this kid grabbed another kid and threw him into him. And they collided and Jigby just oh. down to the ground. And I'm like pushing people out of the way and I'm picking him up. And he's just like, mm-hmm. my, my what? sister-in-law got a concussion from a crowd surfer. Yeah. She was paying oh, it. She was watching the, the band and they came up from behind mm-hmm. and kicked her and it gave her a concussion. Well, mm-hmm. and the problem with crowd surfing is most of the time the people below you are pissed so they grab you and then they <laughs> and just they throw, throw you, you. Yep. yeah it's not even like a I gentle mean, pass it. it's just get out of my way yeah yeah there was 
also crowd surfing. There was one I watched it. I don't know where it was and I can't remember the band, um, but they actually stopped their concert because there was a girl who was like 15, 16 year olds went crowd surfing and he, the lead singer was watching and he witnessed a couple of guys actually started grabbing her Ugh. and he stopped it. And he would, he actually got security. He's like, get these guys out of here. They're not allowed in this concert. I don't want them here. You're going to sit here and you're going to grab a underage girl. You can get out of my, you can get out of here. Good. I don't want you here. Like that. Yeah. Respect. Yeah. Like so he, much respect he called them out. Stuff. Like he literally just a mid song just stopped and was like, nope, I saw this. Wasn't get these that guys five finger death punch? It might, yeah, it might have been actually. Yeah, that's that's it some of the craziest. Been. Is it's yeah. these these hardcore bands that you're like, yeah, f the system, uh-huh. and then they're like super nice. Yeah. yeah, they're like, hey, you don't. It's you want to know why? Off. It's because they're getting all their frustration out. That's true. <laughs> so then they're so it's their zen. Therapy. They're zen, yeah. they're zen <laughs> AF. So, <laughs> see, and I don't know. I, I'm sure all of you did this, but I don't know for sure. But I every time I was at any concert, I was typically general admission. Cause we like to get up into the action, but any girl that was in my area, I felt I had to protect. Oh, for sure. Definitely. So I'd like, you know, you'd, I'd, I wouldn't even be with this girl, but I'd have my arms like around her just to push the guy in front of her from smashing her to death. Yeah. Well, yeah. And isn't it amazing how in concerts you suddenly have like superhuman strength? Oh, yeah, like dude. you would think your hands in a, like a donut shape like this would have, like you could push on your hand and easily like have give, but suddenly you're like rock solid. You're like, nothing's getting in here. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> like, nothing's getting past this. Ugh. I remember that with uh, um, that Disturbed concert uh-huh. when that guy pushed Lisa down. Uh-huh. Speaking of, I grabbed him because he uh, that that was a rough crowd as it is. But this guy was trying to fight his way to the front, and instead of just doing the casual tap and sliding through, just right he was through. just being a douche about it, just pushing his way through. And anyway, he comes out, kind of pushes me to the side, and Lisa was in front of me. And Chris was kind of off to, he was like, to I was in front of her. Is that we what were, it was? Yeah, I was in front and you were behind because I was like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that's what we did because we kind of boxed her in. Yeah. Well, he kind of comes past me and I let him kind of slide by. Well, then Lisa's jumping, enjoying the song and comes down and kind of elbows the guy just because she doesn't see him. She's into the music. Well, he pushes her down. And when she goes to like stand back up, he pushes her down again. Oh. And I grabbed this guy, and I swear his feet were off the ground. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, dude, she's an effing girl. And I like throw him. And I mean, I I hurled the yes. guy. And I was oblivious to all this. I didn't know any of this was going down. Was like, What's going on? I was gonna say if Chris would have known, he would have been knocked out. Well, you're on the ground. They throw a pick. Well then, like, well, then I hear Tony. He's like, yeah, you freaking push. I was like, what? What just happened? <laughs> oh man, I ha- I had this rage that I never oh, yeah, knew dude. I had, but. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I I don't know. Something La- about Last throwback. Like Do you remember Seosin? Oh, I oh, love Seosin, yeah. dude. Wow. wow. Seosin was my jam dude, for a while. I know yes. these names, but I don't know the... I freaking love... I, like I was going to... I, I remembered them earlier, and then I forgot. <laughs> I was no, going to talk about one more, too. Who? So I went and saw a concert with, with some people that we know, but it was Paramore. Oh, and, uh, I love Paramore. Paramore. Yeah, Paramore and then Saliva came on. And oh, it was like, oh, I was like, oh, Saliva. And th- they put on a hell of a show. Like, they put on a good show. And I remember, like, okay, let's go. Like, right in the middle of their set. And I was like, no. <laughs> and so we start walking away. I'm still, like, turning up. No. And so I had to sit and watch it from the side of the fence. Uh, but they were putting on a good concert. Man. They're good. Can I? I dude, Paramore's great in concert, too. <laughs> I'm throwing in all these. Into <laughs> my- <laughs> well, well, side note, do you... How- how far into concert going were you when you realized that the encores were all staged? Oh, it was very early. Wait, yeah. they're oh, yeah. staged? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you're telling me that's a fake? Like, there were always signs. You knew when they were actually done. And I remember I, I figured it out. I can't remember how many I'd gone to at this point. But I figured it out because we were at a Say Anything concert. And we were close enough to the stage that I saw their set list. And they stopped and left. And I'm like, there's like three songs left on there. <laughs> and I was like, wait a minute. That's all been a lie. I think it honestly, cause I, my first concert was, I was 13. And so just being naive to the whole concert scene in general, the first one, I thought it was legit. Um, and then it probably took two or three more after that. As I realized every single concert yeah, I went to had an encore. And I was they like, always, oh, okay. They, they don't turn on the lights. Yep. 
Yep. They leave See, and the lights stay off. And yep, that's yep. what didn't give it away the first time because it was an outdoor concert. And ah. so there wasn't really, I mean, there was lights, but not not like an arena or mm-hmm. whatever. But yeah. And then when you realize, oh, lights aren't kicking on. Nobody's leaving. Sneaky. Mm. Dodgiest <laughs> concert you ever been to. Go. What? Dodgiest? Dodgiest. Like you, who was it saying that they went to uh, Ogden? Camp. Camp. Club Boomba. Yeah, come, oh, yeah. Club Boomba. 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 Dodgiest concert I've ever been to? Kilby Court. Down I've heard, in Salt I've Lake. I've never gone to it, but I've Bro, never been there. That's, weird. Weird. that's that actually torn so down dodgy. now, I believe. It's Bro. gone? Yeah, I believe it's it gone now. It should have been gone decades ago. They the Boomba. <laughs> that, that Say Anything concert? Was it Murray Theater? I forgot all about that. Anything. That tiny, oh. tiny theater. Oh, Dude, yeah. Murray Theater, though, was at it's least decent. I saw, sketch, that's super that's why I saw area. Red. I saw Red at the Murray oh, Theater. Nice. So, but Kilby Court, to give you an idea, was it's in this super dodgy, almost alleyway of a neighborhood. Like across from Kilby Court, there was a house with aluminum foil in the windows. And you're like, I wonder what they're doing in there. Jeez. They're just blocking out the sun. Yeah, they're, they're just, just like, uh, they're, they're, they're not uh, making meth or anything. It's, it's fine. Boomba. <laughs> no, that's Ogden. That's Ogden. But then it was like, ah, oh, dude, it was the jankiest setup ever. But I went to like two concerts there. And every time I was like, oh, I'm going to get killed. I did you have a good time, though? I did. Yeah. Dude, but in the venue. In the, in venue, the venue was pretty. I did room. like that venue, though. It was good, but the club sound, which was next to it, which, well, it was part of it. It was yes. just like another room, but they made it a concert area. Yes. But either way, it was, I mean, we were parking our cars next to a homeless shelter. Yes. Yeah. Right. So, next to tents. Yep. And I'm just like, eh, be, no one's going to steal an Astro van. Yeah. <laughs> that's how I Never felt did. about the complex. <laughs> like, well, that's because ven- it's just a block away from yeah. in the venue. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, and the venue is no longer either. What? Yeah. yeah, that one's gone too. Like gone, gone. Yeah. Like they tore it down. So my, they like tore it down, or it's just no longer a venue anymore. That's stupid. My uh, my niece and her boyfriend, I want to say it was the complex. They went to a rap concert. I can't remember who it was. Somebody kind of big, but um, they not they themselves, but there there were shots like gunshots. Oh, and geez. they actually had to duck behind a car and like. Yeah, it was like a full well, yeah, blown shooting. So, well, it's it was wild, on the news you have and everything. Because the Gateway Mall is right uh-huh. there, and then yeah. it's like less than a block away is the complex, yep. and then less than a block away just Rose Park, isn't it? It's like just ghetto. Yeah. And I could I could be wrong, but I believe that one shut down. If it's been reopened, really? but I think that one shut down because the owner was caught selling drugs inside Jeez. the complex, inside Smart. of it. Like he was uh, dealing marijuana, cocaine, cons- all that stuff. That's where I saw Newfound Glory. That's where we so did almost you, saw Black Veil Blood. Me and you went and saw Amberlynn there. That was okay. Yes. I knew it. Yes. Yes. Do you mean sketchy as in like what we're saying or like the concert itself? Yeah, was- yeah I mean either so way. Where the you sketchiest one like- I can say I went to, and it wasn't even that bad, but it was um, yellow card with the starting line. Oh, nice. And <laughs> it was at... Um, What's now UVU, at the time it was US or UCU or something like that. It was a college. It was before it was university. Mm -hmm. So it went out in Provo or before Provo. I think I was at that concert. Valley. That's a... I think Jess and I were at that concert. This one would have been when I was in like 11th grade. That's where we went to Fall Out Boy, wasn't it? So So this was back after, was it Yellow Card? The guy had cancer scare? Paramoy. I believe so, yeah. Fall Out Boy. Sorry, we're having multiple think you're discussions. Right. Sorry. Um, but anyways, <laughs> I was just weirded out by this concert because at the time, Yellow Card was actually pretty big or they were on the rise. Same thing with the starting line. And we walk in and I literally felt like I was in a high school area. Like I was in a high school gymnasium, the bleachers. Like I remember <laughs> we were sitting on the bleachers. We got seats there. And I remember it got to a point where everybody's like, jumping and having fun dude the whole things were like shaking i felt they were gonna just <laughs> collapse on us it was i was like this is a little weird like it wasn't okay mm. we're we're hitting quite a distance here yeah do we want let's let's find some closure in bringing it to more modern time because obviously we've spent a lot of time oh, it's, in it's, high it's school in high realize college it's such a big part of our lives yeah, yeah. well that's that's it, why that's why i wanted to talk about this because i feel like music whether whether you actually like put on actual music and listen to it, there's music everywhere and it affects you more than mm-hmm. I think people realize. 
Everyone's looking at the time. We've been going for over two hours. Right. Nice. Hey, you want right. to try it? Yeah. Hey, I do. I do. I like. I don't mind long podcasts. There's like, a really there's don't. a three eleven song, um, and it's like this tribute song. The whole time there's it's hey you, have you heard that? Hey I don't you, know. and well it's this tribute song, and they're talking about how this this person helped them through everything, and they've always been there through hard times, all this stuff, and then at the end of the song they say, like they say hey you the whole time, but then they're like music. You've always been my longtime mm, friend. Like nice. they're singing a tribute song to music. That's cool. I was man. like, oh dang, that's good. I that like that. Cool, Speaking man. of tribute, I always think of Tenacious, Tenacious D. Yes. Yes. I was thinking it too. <laughs> Dude, but I used to know that song by heart. Another like, song comes from a tail. <laughs> oh, when another he goes song. into that little beatbox thing. <laughs> yeah. Like a flicker flicker You're basically a spitting image of Jack. It's true. It's true. It's true. But I was gonna say along those same lines, Eminem has a song very similar called 25 to Life. And he's talking like screaming at this person like it's a relationship and just totally slamming it. And at the very end, he reveals that he's talking about his hip hop career. That's crazy. Yeah, and, I like it. Oh, dude, that song still gives me the chills when I think about it. So, kind Ooh, of- songs that give you chills, quick. <laughs> <laughs> Avenged Sevenfold. Oh yeah, Avenged Seven. What song? I can't remember the name of the song. It's just one really good guitar huh. solo. There are a bunch of them. Oh, the one, the one where in the music oh. video his wife dies in the car accident. Okay, oh, um, sad guitar solos, kind of way off uh, as far as Avenged Sevenfold goes, but Jimmy World. Uh, uh, gosh. What it get it faster? Yeah, that, yeah. That mm-hmm. it, 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 it. yeah. Oh yeah. man, that I'm was like Muse, wow. dude. Muse. Which one? Muse has some great In hysteria, solos. The freaking bass guitar yes. is so good. Uh, oh, so with bass. Or Knights of Sidonia. <laughs> with bass, I remember um, it was a Metallica concert, but I remember when their one bass player quit the band or was kicked out of the band whatever and they brought in the new guy and it was their first tour with him and so they introduced him they're like we want to introduce you to so and they gave him a few minutes to solo i never knew a bass guitar could be that diverse like he was going off on this thing i was like oh man it's like Flea from Red Hot Chili Peppers. Dude oh, yeah. Slap oh, a bass off. like nobody. <laughs> Slapping Slap the, the bass. <laughs> I knew you were going to do that. <laughs> Slapping the bass. So, so going into modern, how has your music changed from high school? So maybe even. Much. So is, it's. Am I called? Did anyone else here go to college? I went to you college. Went, I went did some college. Yeah, that counts. I didn't go to college. Okay, so I, I went to after, Knox. I went after, to tech after school high for school. One class. <laughs> where, how has your music changed till today? So it's funny. Um, I used to be into like the the good new age stuff, like Newfound Glory, mm-hmm. Yellow Card, you know, all of that stuff, like the alternative rock, you know, even rock bands, uh, Breaking Benjamin and and stuff like that, and Nickelback and all their new stuff. I have now found myself that I am more happy listening to music when I'm listening to 80s and 90s music. So you've gone, you went backwards. I've gone backwards. You yes. became your dad, or yeah. not your dad, but like a parent. Yeah, I how became they a parent. Yeah. Yeah. I absolutely love listening to 80s alternative or 80s pop yeah. well, and if you, 90s alternative. If you think about it, again, kind of reiterating what I said, like we were so emotionally connected to the music we were listening to. Yes. But like 80s and 90s music is just like, this one I have like there's no emotional <laughs> no, connection. No, it's well, just it's huh, this is just fun. Bubble See, gum. and I feel like I feel like that. Like <laughs> girls just want like is today's modern day. Um, See, and that's it too. Like I modern day music I today of, sucks. Good Charlotte. See, and that's that's how I feel about music today. And I feel like that's why I can't allow my music choice to branch out. Is because I try and I and occasionally I'll find a good song here yeah. and there, but. Some of the stuff that's out, I'm just like, how is this music? Not good. I think it's lost a lot of the uh, the poetic, <laughs> yeah, the poetic yes. feature to it. Again, the other day, just Good Charlotte's. Uh, what is that one song? The it, anthem? It's like uh, no, everything's no, no, gonna anthem. be all right great. now. It's the one like, oh, girls don't like boys. Girls like cars and money. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I was in the kitchen and I just started screaming it. <laughs> it was. It's so oh, yes. doing the dishes in the kitchen is where like yes. I turn my music on and I start going and my kids walk into the room giving me the weirdest looks. Mm-hmm. Some of the songs. I'm the thing I love though. So Kelsey, 
she is a music lover already and i love it her little one-year-old self yeah like she'll be in the living room and our living room separated (laughs) no not even a little not in this house that she'll stupid be, song. She'll be in the in the living room, and I'm in the kitchen doing dishes and everything. And as soon as music comes on, I can turn and watch the corner. And sure enough, her little self will come around the corner, and she just kind of she'll get this like little dance thing yep. going. Uh-huh. You know how little kids do. But uh-huh. the thing I love with her is she knows. Um, she almost has rhythm already. Mm-hmm. Like I'll play an upbeat song and her arms are flapping and she's bouncing and different things. And then a slow song comes on and she almost gets this like wave, just this slow. And I'm just like, Oh, this yep. is fantastic. That's and cool. some songs she comes up to me and wants me to hold her because we're going to dance and everything <laughs> like, Oh man, Dude, I love Scarlett's it. the same. Any music turns on and she's dancing to it. Yeah. She loves it. Oh, I love it. Um, no, I was going to say, oh, I wanted to hurry and ask, do you remember this song? Well, of course, you, oh, I hope you remember the song that you danced to at your wedding, like the first bride and groom dance. Yeah, we did All About Us by He Is We. Mine was, I don't know that it's one. a very, it's a very lovely song. Hmm. Mine was uh, Amber Lynn's Inevitable. Don't you, put Dustin. your eyes on me. I can't. I just went brain dead. <laughs> <laughs> I've, had, I've had a hard time thinking of bands all I night. I think mine was like Brian Adams' Heaven. Okay. I think you're right. Brian Adams. Sadly, I don't know any of these so far. <laughs> Richard Marks was good, well, they're too. All good. They're all good. My mom loved Richard about yours, Marks. Austin? I, I can't think of it. It's I a, remember growing up always wanting Chicago gosh, played my, at my wedding. My brain Chicago. is so foggy right yes. now. Yes. Wasn't it the or, country? Uh, oh, what? It was a country song. Yeah, it was a country song. I can't think of the guy's name. Thomas Rhett. And it yeah. was, was it called Holding Hands. Is that what it is? Mm-hmm. Jess just or, text me. Thomas Rhett, die a happy man. Thanks, <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>, babe. <laughs> you might be dying tonight, but not happy. <laughs> die a happy man. Yeah, I love that song. Gosh, mine, I couldn't think of it. Mine was I'll Maybe Be last night. by Edwin McCain. Ooh. And I'll be your crying That's a good song. Oh, that's a good song. Classic. The th- like the, th- the song that uh, kind of, I mean, not above that, obviously, but the song I liked at our wedding that I danced to with my mom, just because it was unique in the sense of it wasn't your classic heartfelt song. We danced to My Little Man by Ozzy. Uh-huh. It was a song that Ozzy wrote for his son. And so the fact that I was dancing with my mom to it, uh-huh. um, oh man, it was great. Because nice. the lyrics to it and stuff, it talks about how oh, I'm trying to think of some of the lyrics, but basically just that they'll always be there, your protector, that type of thing. But mine was Bon Jovi, "It's My Life." <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's my life. life. <laughs> See, I my music ter- turned into this ter- ter- turn into this weird place. Like I've gotten a lot into like EDM in the last couple of years. Yeah, I've gotten big into EDM. I've gotten what? big into electronic dance music, just oh. like like Rap. Avicii, Nero, um, Major oh, no. Lazer. <laughs> yep, that's just. Um, I love Major Lazer, dude. These are going What's right my thing right over that? Yeah. There are a ton of them. Like uh, 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 Dead the, Mouse. Dead Do you Mouse. Like Dead Mouse? I'd even listen a while back. I would listen to a little bit of Skrillex, but not a ton. Yeah, Skrillex was a little bit. Do you remember when uh, Jonathan Davis from Corn tried to do um, dubstep there for a little it bit? It was really good, though. He actually does. It was really good. What was good. his uh, J Devil? He was did that it his with name? Skrillex. Yeah, that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> is that electronic <laughs> dance music? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean that's like the beginning yeah. stages of it. That was like that was yeah, like high old. school uh-huh. EDM. You're talking uh what song no, is no, that? No, now you've got like Sandstorm. Think of, uh, Sandstorm. Yeah, Titanium that's Titanium like, with Sia. I am uh, Titanium. That oh, was yeah, more yeah. that's more of the like modern. Yeah. Oh, okay. I mean, I like And I actually do really like Sia. I she is she, pretty I good. I think her music's really good. Do you good. like G-Eazy? I don't know if I... G-Eazy's my guy. Maybe. I like him a lot. See, my newest band lately has been Beartooth. Yeah. And I wouldn't even say they're new, but new to me. I just don't... Post Malone. I don't branch out like I, I used to. I love Posty. See, I'm digging He's my boy. Post Malone. Maybe. Okay, I have a question for... And maybe this is just me, but um, if you could sing like a specific singer, is there a voice that you wish you could imitate or have or whatever the word is that you could still you could still their voice yeah brandon yuri 
I don't know Brandon Urie. Yeah, you do. Do I? <laughs> yeah. Who's he lead singer? singer? Lead singer of... Uh, oh, okay. Mine yeah, would be Chris know. Daughtry. Yeah? That dude can Is sing. it Daughtry or Daughtry? Daughtry. 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 That's how <laughs> he's Daughtry. Daughtry. back in the sticks. That's how <laughs> we say it. Oh, Chris Daughtry. Oh, <laughs> That's how I say it. Hooper. Chris. Not Hooper. Dat tree. It is Hooper. <laughs> dat tree over there. Dat, dat Chris tree. Dat tree. Chris you can tell that by the way it is. <laughs> what about you guys? Do you have one? I would probably say, and it's just because of his weirdness to his voice. Um, <sighs> Don't take it. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably not going to be the same, but uh, the lead singer of Corn. Okay, his voice is really? cool. Jonathan Davis. He's Jonathan got a Davis. beautiful voice. Like how he does is like just that weird stuff, like the <laughs> yes, <laughs> dude. Oh, he's, or, he's also got a real weird face, and his forehead's real tall. Or <laughs> have you, uh, I was you say, noticed it's that? Like, that's what a receding hair looks like with that dreadlocks. With dreadlocks. <laughs> <laughs> it just kind of like starts turtle. falling back. <laughs> <laughs> <It's a dreadlock>. <laughs> <laughs> Who was yours, Cam? I was gonna say the singer of System of a Down. That's who I was just about oh. to say. Yes, I can say the corner the lead Ian? singer of System uh-huh. of a Down. Have a bar. Bounce, bongo, bongo, bongo. <laughs> we always <laughs> revert to that stupid song. <laughs> mine would be, uh, mine would be probably Jared Leto. 30, oh, 30 seconds 30 to Mars. Seconds Dude, to Mar- 30 Dude, seconds. His, his voice. Mm. All right, him I'm gonna throw him on my. Dang it, man! I need. Free, I need I'm you gonna guys need you to oh. send me that list you're making so <laughs> I can remember. I'm just adding them all to my plate. My uh, thirty seconds to Mars, man! Holy so crap! Good. They're so good. And let me tell you, people told me all the time that their concerts sucked. Like, don't them. go to thirty seconds. They're a letdown. And I'm like, what? I finally got to see him in concert. Holy crap! Amazing. Watch the man climb scaffolding. See, I need to Come see him. Was singing. Yeah, really? Warp tour. That's awesome. I need Just to see him again. Because <laughs> they oh, claimed... Maybe you were the one that was like, hey, it was kind of a letdown Well, the, the hard thing was, was somebody told me, they're like, oh, he always claims he's sick and he can't scream and blah, blah, blah. And, and so we go to their concert and sure enough, he's like, sorry, guys, I'm not feeling all that well. We're still going to, we're going to kill it tonight voice. and everything. But yeah, I'm not feeling that well. And I'm like, oh my gosh, it's true. And so the fact that I got told that and it came true, yeah. I just assumed that that was true. So hearing that you had a good experience, no, I he, really want to see him again. He screamed. He had fun. It was a blast. I mean, it was... Jenny passed out at that concert. <laughs> 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 she, I know it's because she saw Jared Leto and Ben fainted. I mean, I almost did the same thing. So. Dude, the guy is beautiful. Uh, what would have like, made me pass out? I'm is, sorry, but he's like... It, it's the eyes. He's yep. pushing 50. I really think he's like sure. 40. He's like 48. Oh, cartel? Are you kidding me? Oh, cartel. Oh, yes. I think you. Yeah. Sorry, I'm blowing up all these bands as they're flooding in. I'm like, oh, yeah, cartel. You know who mm. else I'd want to sing like, and it's like a complete 180 a little bit, is Michael Bublé. That guy's got. Yeah. Michael Bublé. Good luck. Yeah. His, did you ever his see. concerts are expense. Yeah. No, just sing like him. Oh, oh okay. Like but him. did you ever see that one concert where he actually pulled the kid up from the audience? Yes. And, and the kid starts and doing And the kid like, blew him away. Yeah. And the funniest thing is, is he's wearing like a dragon t shirt with anime on it. And mm-hmm. he's just like, okay, yeah, let's see what this kid's got. And then, of course, he starts belting away. And his reaction is like, oh. Oh my uh-huh. and he goes, God. okay, okay. And he stands up and pulls them up and like, let's do this. Yeah. So then they do the duo. And then the funny thing is, is I even tried finding that kid after the fact. And sure enough, he got signed to a label, had some music, but it like his career quickly fizzled. Oh, out. I'm sure it did. But oh, yeah. yeah. Remember the main? Yes. Mm. They were good. I never did listen to them. They were fun. Man, you guys are pulling out all sorts of... <laughs> so any other any other like modern day guys? I know you guys didn't weren't huge into modern day, but is there anyone today that you're like, yeah, these guys are rad? See, I don't have any. Mine are minor, minor minor pleasures. <laughs> the closest I can get to maybe is Imagine Dragons. I like them. They're See, good. That's, they uh, as funny me. as it is, that's one band I cannot get mm-hmm. into. Really? Yeah. I they're like selective too mu- songs. They're, they're too overplayed. Can I get a web web? <laughs> yeah, like a, like I actually, something. <laughs> I have some That's guilty pleasures nowadays. I got into Cher Lloyd for a little bit. I thought she was really good. Huh. You know, you know who my guilty pleasure is, is Black some, Pink. somewhat old school Lady Gaga, like bad romance, mm. paparazzi. It can get stuck in your head. It can. Okay. Yeah. I got a question. This one. And I, I keep forgetting to ask this question, so I'm going to ask it now before I forget again. 
what is there a band or an artist that looking like that you stumbled across recently who in your earlier life you hated but now you're like i get it i love their music <laughs> like what how did i not like this before it's just you my prime just- example <laughs> dude i used to hate taking back sunday I still don't like them. Fell in love with them. So good. Especially after seeing them. Dude, their newest album is phenomenal. I still don't like them. Alkaline Trio. Oh my gosh, Alkaline Trio. See, I didn't, I wasn't into them back then. Did did not like them until I saw them live. Or maybe that's the question, who's a band that you didn't like until you saw them live? But then like even uh, Lil Wayne, I never liked Lil Wayne until I started recently listening to him. Dude, now I like love Mm him. I'm trying to think of all the, there's so many people that, I love now that back when they were popular, I was like, these guys are annoying or they suck. And I didn't, it didn't click until like late way later on. Is there anything like that? that rings true to you guys. Just me. Just (laughs) (laughs) fantastic. I mean, I I hate to say it. I'm like a little kid with vegetables when it comes to music. I give it like one chance. And if I don't like it, it's like, okay, and I'm moving on. Mm -hmm. And I need to go back and try there is a new band that I do like bad wolves. Oh, good. Yeah. Bad wolves is dope. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're good. But, um, yeah, I don't know. You know what I hate is when, when I want to love a band and I just can't, mm-hmm. that's how I am with, mm-hmm. um, and it, I will go see his concert any day of the week, but that's how I'm with a Matthews band. Hmm. Now I think never. I saw them Bitch, in concert. It was actually pretty good. I would love huh. to see him in concert. But I just, for the life of me, I cannot sit down and just listen to him. See, and that's how I thought I'd be with like Maroon 5, how I mentioned that their concert was fantastic. I was like, man, I know a lot of their stuff. They put on a great show. Maybe I'll start to listen to them. And then I try and I'm like, yeah, I can't. <laughs> I got <you. laughs> it's, it's I funny because older stuff. Yeah, I know a lot of Dave Matthews, but I've heard his concerts are just spectacular. Mm-hmm. And so I heard he's a douche. No. Hey, hey, Cam. Matchbook romance. Tell me Ooh. about your K-pop. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> it's pretty because good. I thought you were going to dive into this sooner. And now I'm just going to dig you out of this. I, I mean, I'm not like super deep into it, but this band Blackpink, it's, uh, an, all, it's an all what? girl group from South Korea. They have some good songs. <laughs> my guys, they freaking one of the girls like raps and I'm like, dang, it's impressive. Hmm. Well, they, there's a whole wave of K-pop. Oh coming yeah. Over, like it's BTS. wild. See, I mean, I've never listened to them though. I that. randomly hear them on the radio and I, I didn't, I wouldn't know who they were unless my radio told, like had the text mm-hmm. on the screen. Yeah, no, but Blackpink is good. And now Kaylee's like obsessed with them. See, I, uh, I did, I had no idea what you were, when, uh, when we put up that Facebook post, just the get to know us and it had the like get to know you questions and it was the guilty pleasure mm-hmm. and you said black pink. I had to Google it. I was like, what on earth is black pink? <laughs> <laughs> uh, NF. You like NF? Oh, oh yeah. I like NF. NF, NF is oh, yeah. Guy. He's really mm-hmm. good. He's one I keep forgetting and I keep th- saying, okay, I got to get him. I got to listen to more, more. And then I forget. There's like you Bruno Mars. Chase put up a Bryce video Vine. of a rock guy that was like, oh, there's like a German rock band that does. Oh, crap. Oh, I think I remember him putting that up. I can't that remember. song actually is catchy. Oh, it was that stupid song that I like. <laughs> <laughs> it, oh. I can't think of it. See, and currently I'm I'm kind of into like sea shanties. <laughs> <laughs> I, I came across one on TikTok and it was really good. Uh, and so then I pulled up some from like Assassin's Creed Black Flag. Yeah, Wait, is this ones. a band? See, no, 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 just, just like that type shanties, of that just yeah. a sea music. shanty. Like that the pirate type of music. songs when they're singing. Oh, okay. like, yeah, I played one for us once a while. They're cool. Ago. No, I like those a lot. They're just kind of fun and you're just like, yeah, I like this. Like Yo Ho and a bottle of rum. Yeah. About like the weekend. Do you guys like the weekend? I'm I mean, okay with right. the weekend. I like some of his songs. I'm trying to think of like he, he, yeah, he. there's only one of them. Oh, he is the weekend. You know, surprisingly oh, though, he did the Super Bowl, the Super Bowl show. That's that right. Everyone That's made why. awesome memes where he's like blurred <laughs> out, and they're like looking for your keys two minutes before work. <laughs> <laughs> One I'm kind of just the one song. I don't know what else they sing, but uh, AJR's uh, "Bang." Yeah, that's a catchy song. What that song is fun. that one? That's the one where it's like, uh, oh, no, I can't even think of the tune of dun, it. Dun, dun. Yeah, it's like bang, bang, bang. Oh yeah. 
bum, bum, we're bum, going bum, out bum. with a bang. Yeah, I can't. Bang, bang, too. bang, bang. Yeah, thank you. Gosh, I can't. Somebody remix that again on TikTok with Mario. <laughs> <laughs> and because doesn't he say like, here we go? Yeah. Yeah. They here replaced that with Mario, and it's like, here we go. <laughs> bang, bang, bang. <laughs> it was so good. Dude, some of those are funny. Do you remember the Taylor Swift one where it's like, the goats? and I'm lying on the cold, hard ground. So good. Uh, oh, my gosh. This is. Uh, this is I also mean, taking me back to like music videos on VH1 in the morning when yes. when it was good and it was they were playing like <laughs> Story of the Year and Sugar Cult and like all those bands. Sugar Cult. Sugar I Cult. mentioned them earlier. Yeah. They did. Did you? <laughs> yeah. I must oh, have tuned it out. Uh, speaking of sorry, VH1 and stuff. Have you seen the meme with MTV where it's like MTV's celebrating their 25th anniversary? Here's to 10 years of music or whatever. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> Dude. Oh. Um, that so, made me, I don't know why I thought of this, but Jimmy World's um, May Angels Lead You In was oh, our yes. prom song. That was beautiful. That was our prom song. Oh, you had good songs then. Yeah. Man, our high school played like the... It wasn't that, man. It wasn't that, Okay, it played the boot, scoot, and boogie. Well, Every, I mean, uh, like, you had those songs to dance to, but the actual theme song was the guy that, like, I don't that. Think Everybody played clap your hands. Oh, my gosh. So, <laughs> Cupid's song or whatever. Okay, so a story with it. that, how you said, oh, it's cool to know, know uh, songs and bands before they get popular. So we went on a cruise when I was younger, and um, they had this, like, club for teens, and they played that song. And it was like... One hop this time, and yeah, that whole that whole thing. Well, <laughs> yep. on the cruise, it was fun because yeah, we were all dancing to you it, and happen. it was catchy. Well, then we get back to the mainland, get home, get settled. That song's just getting popular, and I was sick of it. And I was, <laughs> I was like, oh man, the we get back to the mainland. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sorry, man. Oh, oh, gosh, I want to throw out two bands for your list. Okay, that I think you guys should go look up. Get it. These are foreign bands. One's kind of big out here. One is not. Um, the one that's not big out here is the Rasmus. I feel like I've heard of them. They are amazing. The Rasmus. Yes. So what's their most popular song? Uh, Falling. Oh, what it's, am I thinking of? They've got Falling in the Shadows. Oh, that reminds me of Hoobastank. Ooh, Egypt oh, Central. Hoobastank. What? Have you ever heard of Egypt Central? No. Mm. Um, the other one, though. Has one subscriber. You want me to follow these guys? <laughs> yes, man. Yeah, real good. You, you I told, told you, you they start wearing purple. I told you, man. <laughs> Rasmus, they are not big out here, but they are huge. I believe they're... Mm, they're not Norwegian. I can't remember, but out in that area. <laughs> <laughs> I got not remember. Who's the Mongolian band? The other one. These guys are Norwegian. Oh, yeah. Um, Mill and Colin. Who? I Mill love and Mill and Colin. Colin. Is Mill and Colin. Dude, yes. I love them. That, I used to skate to them. Oh, that all reminds me of time. Heavy. Oh. There was another band like right around Mill and Colin. I MXPX? can't remember the name. MXPX, MXPX was great. MXPX, oh. <laughs> they were fun. Uh, Responsibility. What's, what's that? that? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go full circle, man. You got that. Uh, Machine Gun Kelly bringing back the pop. It'll be interesting. I think bands are going to resurge. <laughs> oh, there's only so That's much auto tune. I was thinking about like think of all the concerts we had the opportunity to go to. Does that even happen anymore? Well, not this year. Mean? Well, I mean like even before this year, like like all the bands we're we're mentioning had small followings when yeah. we were listening to them. So they were hole in the wall concerts. Oh, they still have those. That's, like, yeah, for That's who? All all sorts of people. And you got to think, man. For us. It's just For us. now, I mean, granted, you can have a smaller following and not be able to host a concert because you're internationally, mm -hmm. you're sharing your music internationally now. Mm -hmm. But yeah, they're still small artists that go to small venues. Nice, nice, nice. It's true. Amber Lynn, last time they came to concert was a very small venue. It was at the one right there on... Um, with the Union Station right there next to... Oh, dude, Delta I Center love that venue. Yeah. 
It's called the oh, Union. N- yeah, the Union. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is it? Yeah. No, I thought it was that one was actually really the small. Depot. To where they play. The, the Depot. It's the yeah. Depot. It's, a, it's in the Union building. Though. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, but that's it, where well, I saw it's, some it's forty-one. To it. Yeah. Yeah. That's where I saw some forty-one. And it's still a pretty it was twenty small. bucks. Yeah. So Best great. concert I've ever seen for the money. Exactly. That was the other best thing about our taste in music because it was cheap. Right. It was so cheap. Good. See, problem. I was always into the mainstream stuff, so it was hard. But I had a dad that would always buy me concerts. Coheed and Cambria. Oh, oh yes. Coheed. See, now this is where I'm the minority. Because oh, yeah. you don't like them, or yeah. you just never listen to them. I, I don't like them. Posted something the other day. They I can posted come one in. of their music videos on Facebook, and yeah. Tony wrote and said, "This is a great song bring until bring I start bring singing." Bring yeah, bring and that's just it. <laughs> that's my favorite all their, part. All their yeah. music is fantastic. It's just when he sings, like they do John uh, Mayer, really tiny voice. Yeah, <laughs> like there's that song that you posted. What's it called? Home. Welcome uh, yeah, home. home. Yeah, welcome, welcome home. home. Yeah. He plays on a, du- a double guitar, dude. Oh no, I yeah. love it. Oh, it's so good. It's fantastic. It's amazing. <laughs> like I'm uh. <laughs> like, like squeaker off of <laughs> <laughs> now backed in the crowd. All right, See, it's like close half- us out, man. Yeah, all right, we got another podcast oh. to do tonight. <laughs> yeah, all right. I, I I would love to come back to music though, because modest it's- mouse. <laughs> <laughs> I love Modest Mouse. Yes, I have two of their albums. I bought two of their Death albums. Death Cab for Cutie and Blue. Yeah. Service. Blue. Sorry, turn it off. Turn it, it off. Is Paul 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 Thanks for joining in. We're gonna leave before anyone says anything. Thanks for joining. We'll see you next week. Oh, Thanks for being part of this crowd. Thanks, guys. Let us know in the comments if you guys know of these bands and if you still listen to them today. Yes. Okay. Love you. Bye. Or love there's you, bye. anything we missed. Love you. Bye. Bye. bye.